Hey, yo, Flip. Yo. I'm going to put you on to some fire, man. They got this new bed wash company. They got the lotion and the, the everything. What's their name? They got a recovery room. It's What's out- the name? Maestro's, Maestro's Classic. Gee, money's up front. I'm I'll, put you, you I'll put you on. No, you're man. not put you on the you Maestro's, sure? man. You forgot the way I brought you? You forgot where I brought oh, you up there? Oh, man. You forgot? You forgot man. about Ghost? All right, all right. Who is What's his name? Ghost. You know who he cool, man. Yeah. This is cool, man. Yo, make sure you get your Maestro's Classic Bed Care products yes. today at Target, CVS, mm-hmm. or go on maestrosclassic.com and use the promo code QUEENSFLIP to get 10% off. 10%? That's it? I thought, it was, I thought it was free if you put your... Are you crazy? All right, I got it. Make sure you go there today. Log on. Maestro's with an S, dot com. I'm from Queens. G-Money! Yo. What's up, man? How you doing? What's good? What's good? We back. We back at it. <sighs> long week, long week, long day. A lot of know, shows, man. A lot of shows, man. A lot of, extra, a lot of extra shows on the, you know what I'm saying, what's the taste? You yeah, 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 after, shout after out to that. Show. Yeah, 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 yeah. How you feeling, man? I'm good, I'm good. Working hard, you know what I'm saying? Looking, yeah, I like your sweater. You had the office shirt last episode, man. I'm you know? down too, but you know. What's it say? Oh, man. <laughs> Yo, who get you these shirts? Uh, you know. I have friends in, in, in good places. <laughs> <laughs> but you feeling good, though? Everything good. Kind of, yeah. We had a lot of episodes, man. Flip the script, man. They, yes. you, know, we, you know, shout out to everybody that's been reaching out and want to be part of the platform. I think it's it's, it's amazing. It's just definitely, definitely a lot of stories. You know, you just keep getting calls about oh this story God. and that story. is just it's enough. <laughs> Today, you don't know how much calls I got about the clip we dropped. And oh, my God. It's just, ah. Uh, I want to do something for the fans, though, and, and, and the supporters, man. You know, mm-hmm. if, if y'all tune in right now on YouTube, you know, I'm, I want you to either leave, leave, leave a comment on the YouTube page or on my Instagram page at DJGMoney156. I want to answer some of y'all questions during the intro of our show. One question, though, each show. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to go crazy. But if you got a good question, I'm going to pick the best question. I'm going to shout you out, and I'm, I'm going to answer it, whether it's about myself or Queens Flip or, or the podcast or past podcast guests we had or whatever. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? We, we're going to pick one question each show before the show gets started for the fans and supporters. You know what I'm saying? So do something a little different. You know what I mean? That's dope. Oh yo, what's up? Yo, oh yeah, can we um Yo, yeah, yeah, yo, yo I, I I scream, man. We don't E-bop, got nothing up, in the back man? of the screen, E Bot. We can't do our guests like that, yeah, man. You gotta, you gotta give them the, the proper the proper show. <laughs> the man. hell is this? We can't give them the there we oh, go. Oh, all right, all there right. we go. Yeah, nah. Yo, you trying to violate, man? You talking about you? You trying to put space? Cause we talking about the t- the towers earlier? <laughs> huh? You trying to be funny, bro? You want us to get flagged? Huh? Yeah. yeah, man. But it's good though, shout man. Out I, E-Bot. <laughs> it's so okay. <laughs> I definitely want to salute everybody, man. Shout out to Ebot. Shout out to Nazis. Yeah. You know, they're definitely putting a lot of work behind the scenes. For sure. Uh flip the script, man. You know, we we we're taking it to the top, man. You know, um it's looking real good as far as the platform is concerned. Um, you know, and uh, a lot of people saying they want to go to Chicago, go, go to Connecticut, <sighs> they, they want to go to the, the, the other places to get to get some more stories, man. I don't know how, how we gonna we gonna figure this out. All right, all right. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully we do, man. Hopefully, I don't know, man. <laughs> you know me, man. I just I, it's just too much, man. It's, it's, it's a lot. It's too it's much lot. stories, man. <laughs> Everybody got a story, right? Damn, son. Everybody got a story. Yo, I was speaking to K. Shout out to my man Killer. He was like, yo, he said, my nigga, I, I don't I don't know how you can sit there for two hours and listen to the stories, <laughs> but the stories be so captivating. Yeah, but once, then, once, once you hear, you like you locked in. You know what I'm saying? And then you go home and think about it and be like, yo, come on. And then, and then other people want to come on and refute the stories. Yeah, yeah. So then now you got to just listen. To, it's, ugh, it's too it's, much, man. It's crazy. I feel good, though, man. You know what I'm saying? Um, we back like we never left. That's a fact. And, um, you know, next guest, you know, I was listening to some stuff. He looks completely different than the pictures that I saw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was trying to match it up you with know, him. Yeah, he yeah, I know, I know. I know. He looked different, man. Yeah, you know, <laughs> actually, you know, he looked, yeah, he looked different. He doesn't look. He doesn't look Spanish. He look more Middle Eastern like right now to me. Mm. For real, that's the truth. <laughs> yeah, he's fishing. He look ah for real. He like you fuck somebody. <laughs> he uh-huh. look crazy, bro. Yeah. My nigga, yeah. It was like, came here. I was like, what the fuck going? On? I thought it was a, what's going on? Who is this guy, man? <laughs> he look like the guy. He look, look completely different, right? Uh, right or wrong? He, he came uh. in. I was trying to match it up. I was looking like. Yeah. <laughs> G money. Yo. Episode motherfucking 108. Nigga, we made, made it. it. Oh, whoa, G. Whoa, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. 108, bro. We did 107 yesterday. The, the, the Nietas. Remember the Nieta episode we didn't put out because they fucked up the episode. That was 107. So then yesterday, or the, the last interview we did with Rudy Lowe, that was 107. Remember, we didn't put 107 out. Mm. Remember, they fucked right, it up. Right, 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 right. Remember, they, they, they messed it up. They were from, well, man, I don't want to do that to them. 107 is us here today, right. 107th Street. 
Yeah, well, this is episode 108. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out yeah. to 107 Street. <laughs> well, you can do it. G Money! Yo. We're going to give this man a proper introduction. He came in and he talking before our introduction. Well, after. Yeah, he yeah. talking. I like yeah, it already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Episode motherfucking 108. Nigga, we made it. There we go. Yeah. We got a special guest. Uh, you know this man. I mean, coordinated too. Look at the socks. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Coordination. Oh, let's go. I like him. I like him. Round of applause. A round of applause for my man Chango in the building. Chango, man, salute, salute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah God yeah. bless, God bless. Yeah, God bless. Tell us who you got with you today. My partner, Titon. Titon, salute, brother. How you what's doing? Good, what's good, people? What's bless, on? bless. Uh, Welcome to Flip the Script. You know, before G Money EO pops it off, um, you know, we're getting a lot of requests to have you up here. Yeah. Um, mm. Yeah, well, yeah. God keeps sending, a couple of guys, like three, keep sending the same message. Over and over, get Chango up there, get Chango up there, and we finally got Chango up here. All right. Mm -hmm. What do you think right. people like about you? You just like you? I didn't know people like me to tell you the truth, man. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a surprise to me. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, this guy, man, he kept writing and writing, and I want to hear. I'm like, what's he? My assistant kept showing me and showing me. This guy keep reaching out. Then another guy. I'm like, what's going on? Mm. Then I found out. You know, I read I read the story and listened to it. All right. Before we, you know, somebody else hit us up. But yeah, man, salute, man. I, I definitely did. That's dope. What's thank up, you, G? Thank you. So before we get started, you know, let let, let everyone know where you from. Um, you know, who 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 is Chango? We from 107th Street, of Columbus Avenue. Um, that's where we been raised at. That's where we made money at. That's where we got in trouble at. Unfortunately, that's where we uh uh committed a lot of crimes at. And mm -hmm. that's where we at now, but doing better things, you know. Okay. Without crime, crime free, scared straight. As a matter of fact, <laughs> take us back to your younger days before, before the before it got crazy, crazy. You know, when 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 you were, you know, young Chango. What what age? Um, let's let's, let's go back before, but before the crimes and all that. You know, what I'm saying if, if if we can go back that far, before yeah, the yeah. crime started, like what kind of kid were you growing up? Um, I was always uh ambitious, but. Um, but we were displaced, you know, living in shelters, living in other mm. people's cribs, mm. moving to Puerto Rico for a place to stay. And so that was life for me, just bouncing around and trying to figure out how to how to help or how to make it happen at a young age, too. And um, when I was about 10 years old, we moved to Brooklyn. I was We were living in a, in a house, finally. You know, my I, w I used to always wonder, like, damn, I wonder what it would feel like to live in a house, you know? Mm. I wanted to be a motherfucking Cosby kid, I think. <laughs> so... Um, we were finally living in a house, but it wasn't the typical situation. You know, there ain't no light in the house. We using candles. There ain't no gas. We we eating out, and you know those kind of things were occurring. So we ended up back in um, Manhattan, and this around this time I was 10, 11 years old. How come there's no lights lights in the house? It's just the that's that's what we you know. I'm that's talking about I'm talking about eighty one. You know, and mm -hmm. and you know we just was displaced. There was no um. That was some that was somewhere where someone allowed us to stay at for a month or two. Oh wow! But okay. you know it was like like on the down low, mm -hmm. so you, we couldn't get no lights. You know, and we didn't have money, so we it was it was that kind of situation coming up. So everything you had to fight for, mm -hmm. one way or the other. You know, life consisted of um, for me at least. Um, stressing because I see my mom stressing over what she can't do for us, you know. Or you you walk into the mailbox for those food stamps, and you, once you don't see all them colors in there, you know mm -hmm. them shit ain't come. So um, it it always became a thing of wanting to help and not knowing how to help because you're young and you don't really, you know, ten years old, eleven years old. Right, right. So life was really um harsh because um the person you love the most, although they're trying the best they can for you, you really can't do nothing for them. You know, mm. so that's what it was like for me. We didn't have a, a man in the house ever. Where's your dad at? Uh, my dad is where he was, and where he's at right now. He's always been employed. He just not, never been not a dad. There. Gotcha. Yeah. How many siblings you had growing up? Well, I, had I had two. I had two. I got one left. I had a brother and a sister. My sister died as a result to a drug addiction. She contracted HIV and died of wow. AIDS. About she didn't take any medication. She wanted. She was. She was uh, traumatized to the point where she didn't take any medication to rush it, and that's what she did. So she died fairly quickly. Mm. And, um, <clears throat> you know, uh, one thing led to another, bro. It's always, um, it always looks better than how it really is. Right. You know? I have a question. Um, yeah. You said that your father wasn't there. He's at where he's at now. So, 
Like, did did you know him? Sure. You knew him, but it was, and but you guys never had a relationship. He was never. Was did you have a relationship with him? You know, you know, we tried my brother and I, but um, when I was about seven years old on 106th Street in Columbus Avenue, I saw him. He never lived with us, and um, I said, Dad. And he told me, don't ever call me that in public. Oh, so wow. I knew since then, damn, I did something wrong. So um, then I, then it was explained to me I didn't do nothing wrong. And they explained to me, you know, he was wrong, blah, blah. But I never did that again anytime I saw him. And so when I would see him, it was, you know, sporadic, never a routine thing. And it was just uh, like a nod or some shit. I don't even know what, 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 that, what that really was. Mm. And then when I got older... Um, maybe with my teens, and we were already in the street. Mm -hmm. He he heard somehow, you know, and he asked me, and I didn't deny it because I was just wearing what the, what the fuck you left, what you gave me to do. So I'm just wearing like yeah, and, and that's me, and all this shit right here is me, and blah blah blah. I took that attitude, you know. But um, we didn't really have any conversation after that until. Maybe a month before I got arrested, where he tried to convince me to kill somebody for him that killed his daughter's uh, boyfriend, and she's suffering, crying, and blah 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 blah. And wow. I just listened to him and and was thinking, so you could sacrifice me so she could stop crying, give her a Kleenex, motherfucker, long put, put, put me at stake. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> the fuck. Wow. Well, you know. Um, he never did nothing for us, man. Nothing, zero. God forgive me. For, I feel guilty even saying that, thinking maybe he did something you don't know about it, bro. But, mm. um, so you know when I do see him around, I just so you still see him. Yeah, when I see him around, he don't see me. So it works best that way, you know. I either walk past him or around him, and that's that. And you never, and I, I want to, we're going to move on from that subject, I don't mean to pry, but you never had that conversation with him to let him know how you might have felt. And do you think that him not being around might have caused you to be in the streets? Maybe if he was around, you could have took a different route. Oh, definitely. Um, His kids all went to college on his side with the ones he took care of. Oh. And, oh. and um, of course, it would have turned out different. Um, I did try to have the conversation with him while in prison, but um, you know he wasn't too receptive. So I suggested we write each other, and then he reminded me that I would take a PO box, and then he would have to give an ID, and then somehow somebody could connect me and him together, and then you know they, people gonna know you're my son, and I'm like, all right, bro. So then I tried again when I came home, but it didn't work either. So I left it at that. That's What's what I'm that? cool with. That's crazy. All right, so you, you guys are about you said like like ten years old. You, you see mom struggling. You, you trying yeah. to figure things out. Um, what about school? You, you guys went to school, or, or were you just? I went to school, yeah, but um, school for us was really you're gonna definitely eat breakfast, lunch, and you're gonna be warm for eight hours before you come home, and you gotta turn on the stove to stay mm. warm. <laughs> so it was a it was a tool to use, you know. And you know, I'm, that wasn't unique in that. I'm, you know, that's still happening to some people, our color and our na same neighborhoods. You know, right, right. but but um, I just I, I'm old man now, so now I realize I've always taken things harder um, than other people. That's what I've that's what I've come to the conclusion. So so him not being around, yeah, I wanted to go outside and do something because. You know, it's one thing to be living, it's another thing to be existing. And if you only eating and shitting, you just existing, you ain't really living. And mm. If you a child at home and it's cold and you, and you got to be dressed up in the daytime, dressed up in the nighttime, and you got to get a little note to go to the neighbor to get sugar, and you got to, um, you can't have no friends over because you ain't got no furniture, you don't want to, but you got furniture, but there's a can of beans holding the sofa. Uh, you know what I'm saying? That shit ain't normal, that shit ain't regular. You just grow up. Um, I guess wondering about a whole lot of shit that's going on and not going on for you. Wow. When did you guys meet? He can tell you that. Like '87. I was probably like 13. 13. Like 15. Right. Okay. And y'all met on. Um, met actually, we from the same neighborhood. Well, 
he had family in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I had family in the neighborhood mm -hmm. all our lives. But my mom's lived in the Bronx. Mm -hmm. Well, we lived in the Bronx. Whatever, she came on bad times, broke up with her boyfriend or whatever. We had to leave the crib. She ain't pay the rent. We got evicted or whatever. We end up at grandma and until we got back on our feet. And um, it just happened to be that at the, it happened at the same time. He came back from Puerto Rico. I came back from the Bronx. The kids used to have curfew. I ain't have a curfew. He ain't have a curfew. On his way home, we used to bump heads and yeah. just talk and talk and talk and talk and talk until we came up with what got us in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> talk about plans, plans, and plans. <clears throat> and then we, uh, you know, cause you, because you plan good stuff and bad stuff. Everybody does. Not everybody admits what they're really thinking, you know? Right. But um, it's when you give life to what you're thinking about that you either do something right or do something wrong, mm -hmm. I believe, you know? Until then, your thoughts are dormant. And um, if you don't exercise them, that's where they stay, dormant, right. good or bad. Hmm. You you know, um, I heard even in the interview you did, shout out to InfoMinds. Shout out to InfoMinds and for the coach. Shout yeah, out to shout out to InfoMinds and for the culture. I did listen to them, listen to them today, actually. was I was in there listening to it. Um, You went back to Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. You were born in Puerto Rico? Yep. And um, you went back, at what age did you go back to Puerto Rico? I was probably uh, 14, 15 years old. For, how long you out there for? 18 months. Okay. Now, was Puerto Rico living out there at that time, was it a better living? I mean, it's the country that you guys are from. Yeah, um, I mean. Is it considered a country, Puerto Rico country? Not a country, right? It's, it's, they made it part of you. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Listen. Man. Uh, salute to Puerto Rico, man. So, <laughs> let me answer you. Yeah, sure. Um, it was difficult out there because we went out there on the... Damn, that's the last place on the list to go. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It wasn't like, yo, we're going we gonna to go chill. We got beach chairs, balloons, all kind of shit. We're going to go drink. Uh, I don't know, Kool-Aid by the, by the... I don't know about the shade. I don't know. It was nothing like that. We was like, yo, there's no place else to stay because after... The, the truth is, everybody thinks after three days, that's all Dominican saying, you know? And you go to somebody's house, at first it's cool, but after four days, they want, you mm -hmm. know, you want your space, or you make it too much noise, or you farting too much, whatever it is. But mm -hmm. it was hard for a mom and three kids to be in somebody's crib. We, we, we were never separated. She never separated us. So um, here we are in Puerto Rico, and we're in a family house, but, you know, it's old. It's the countryside. It's just wood with some metal sheeting on top. So now we got a place to stay, but... Got to wait to see if we get welfare in Puerto Rico. We got to wait to see where we're going to get school clothes from. Now you got to go to school over there with uniforms. Where we live at, we don't got no car, so we got to wait on a bus. You know, there's all kind of other problems. You know, it's just green pastures, but there's mm -hmm. all kind of other problems waiting. So it, for us, it was torturous, actually. Wow. Be because um, we didn't really fit in. We were looked at like outsiders, and, and, and the girls liked us, and so the guys didn't like us, you know what I'm saying? We were like fucking shit up for them as you know in school so uh, my mom's recognized that and she just decided to bring us back but that plan just um that plan just accomplished getting back we came back now it was crack was out there bro mm -hmm. you know full like everywhere everybody's a crack dealer and uh we went back to columbus avenue to stay in a in a, in a friend's um apartment in a room that turned out to be disastrous because he had other plans with us. He had plans with my mom sleeping in his room and we sleep in that other room. And when that didn't work after 30 days, we had to go. So we had to pack all our shit again, garbage bags. It wasn't much, but boom. That's when we ended up where, where he was talking about. I used to run into him. We ended up in a welfare hotel that was um, on 109th Street, 312, right? Yeah. And um, that shit was... The wild, wild west in that motherfucker. It was shootouts on every floor. There's Damn. multiple drug spots on every floor. And it's just an SRO. So it's just multiple rooms in each corner of the building. And you share a bathroom with like eight people and, mm. or nine people or ten people. But as you could imagine, that shit is now you just in a room. You got a bed, a little couch if you could squeeze it in there, a refrigerator and a sink. And you're not allowed to cook in there. 
And um, and then we were just all in there. So then my mother used to have to wake up every morning to bleach the the, the bathtub and the toilet because the dolphins would be cleaning out their needles in there and you, they spray all that blood and, and shit. So that shit was another trauma because now you, you, know, you don't wake up to go to school normally. You got to wake up like for this drill and she got to bleach and then you go in there and it stinks like bleach, don't breathe too hard and then get dressed and then go. And then when you come back, the, 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 they raided the building. You got to wait to go upstairs. <laughs> Then when you get on the elevator, that shit is soaked in piss. And then when you get upstairs, this motherfucker's online trying to buy something. That shit was just constant, you know. Um, I don't know what I could call it, man. Craziness, I guess. Constant. What, what was a good day for you back back then? Like, you, you ever had, like, a good, you know, uh, uh, one good day <coughs> during that time? I lost my virginity around that time. <laughs> but it sound, it, sound it was They were good days, you, brother. I'm just telling you, um, you know, I'm trying to answer your question as best as possible. It were good days, but... Um, they were just good days in comparison to the really bad days, gotcha. you know? Mm, gotcha. Like, you got pizza today, you know? But at the end of the day, <laughs> now at age, we're thinking about a dollar. If your mother had to struggle to buy three slices of pizza, was it really a good day? Hell to the no, right, you know? Right. So what was your conversation like? What was the conversation? You ever seen Pink in the Brain? That's what kind of conversation <laughs> we had. We want to take over the world. Wow. You know, what we could do and how we could do it. He used to pick my brain. That's what it was. This shit, cause I already was in the streets. Yeah. So I turned out to be like the black sheep with the kids. They want their younger brothers to be with us, or their parents, or whatever. So word would get around. So he already knew that I was in the streets. Yeah. So he started picking my brain, like, "Yo, what you doing? Where you at? What you going on?" Da 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 da. And me, he was full of answers. Mm. I was already on some other shit, cause I learned by teaching. You dig? So. I'm just basically learning the game and I'm sharing it with him. That's how we that was our conversation. Yeah. Like when we going to get another dollar? How could we turn this situation out over here? Why you was in the streets? Cuz not as dramatic as him, mm -hmm. but basically the same struggle. Mom Duke okay. had me when she was 18, mm -hmm. dropped out of school. Her and my pops broke up when I was like 4 years old. She jumping around, she, you know, for lack of a better word, what we would call a dot now. And I love my mother to death and respect her. I wouldn't allow you to call her that, but mm -hmm. that's what she was. You know what I mean? She'd get with this dude, she'd get bored or whatever, and we break up. Uh, welfare. I say today, I don't know why she ain't get with a rich dude. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't be having to go through what I'm going through. But yeah. <laughs> um, and that was it. So actually, one day I was, I was messing with this girl. How old were you? I was 12. She was 13. Oh, Lord. Yeah. Now... Uh, when so what happened? I got this girlfriend, in the era where light skinned dudes was dominating. You understand what I'm trying to tell you? So you feel me? So now, <laughs> me, you know, I got a bad chick. So now I'm I'm popping. As far as you know, what the chick was, Easter's around the corner over here. My mom's telling her friend, I don't got no money for the kids for Easter. So I'm like, shit, I'm tired of going through this shit right here. Now I got a girl, everybody going to Great Adventures. That was mm -hmm. one of the little joints that... Yeah. So I'm like trying to figure it out. I try to go get a job in the grocery store. But um, Dominicans were not very popular in the Bronx at that time. You understand? It was dominated mostly by Puerto Ricans and blacks. You understand? So I saw a kid from the neighborhood in the store working. Now he's working somewhere else. I'm looking up. Like, oh, I could, yo, listen, could I get this job? Oh, no, nah, no, nah, no. Nah. It was just some, um, he knew his father, his mother, and that's how they put him on, and I wasn't in that clan. So after, you know, trying to find some legitimate hustles with not too much patience, mm -hmm. I walk up on the block, I see my man, Ed, shout out to Ed, but he in the feds. He got a lot of money. He a little bum-ass nigga like me, you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, where you get that money, B? And he explained it to me. Yo, I'm flipping cracks. I, I, I asked him, him a few questions. I'm like, put me on. And I jumped in that wagon. And that's how I jumped in the streets. On 165th and Wharton. And shit. And then um, I worked for them dudes for like a week. And shit, because when payday came, try to hit me with that. Yo, I'm going to take you shopping. Being that I was young, I'm like, I ain't trying to go shopping with you, nigga. I want my money. <laughs> you know, them niggas did some. Bullshit, try to rough me. I'm like, all right, I ain't stupid. So um, I took my money in a pack. Like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to work. My shit, nigga. And then him and this, and he had a partner. The dude that I was working with had a partner, which was a female. They had a discrepancy. They split up. 
I went with her and became a partner with her because she was going to college. So she was like, I put up the money, you get to work, I got the spot, you handle everything, you give me half, because she was going to college at the time. So I did that with her for like a month, but she wasn't really all the way into it, and I was already looking at, I got to go somewhere else. And on my way home, that's one of the conversations with him was going on. Mm -hmm. And um, he was like, yo, I got a, a spot with a manager, he smoked this, that, and the other. We was thinking about weed, but that shit didn't really last. And um, we tried to, you know, think about some other shit, but we ended up in this job called Ricky's. And we basically came up there. Then they shut that, we bankrupt that shit, that whole restaurant. Everybody <laughs> the manager, the waitresses. It was painters and burgers at, at the end. Everybody, they closed it down. Word. So, <clears throat> all right, so. You guys are young. Do you have any big homies that that took you under the wing? Cause now I heard your story. You went half with the girl. She wasn't in no way. Then you chopped it up. Yeah, we went to a location. They shut it down. Where do we go from there? When the, when, when when like do you have any big homies that gave y'all any packs or nah, put y'all down or y'all just I like that. I mean, a big homie came 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 along afterwards. Okay, after they shut down the spot. We went running around in the neighborhood, mm -hmm. selling crack. We young, you know, older dudes, they not really trying to let us in, but that's not a problem, we getting in. We're not trying to hear that. Mm -hmm. You gotta kill us, fuck that. Um, the older dudes was talking shit like, yo, these little kids think they grown ass men. They just knew that we was kind of like a problem. I ain't know that then in, in retrospect, I could, I figure. So they was like just trying to build support among them like oh, these kids is bugging uh uh maketumba heard it they used to look up to him he was their peers and he thought they was telling him like a complaint and that shit just kind of like you know like hold on these little niggas remind me of me i want to holler at them and that became the big homie yeah. just because of admiration and all that not because we really like it was like we just was feeling his swag his style the way he treated us Okay. You know, with the respect, it wasn't just like, oh, shit, he got a big chain in the car. Oh, yo, I'm... Fuck that. We ain't give a fuck about that. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I did hear his name in the Info Minds interview. Um, so once again, salute to them. Um, who was Makatumba? Who was who was he? What was his race, ethnicity? Was he black? Dominican. 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 Dominican, originally from 109th Street. And he was a large dope dealer from the Lower East Side. Wow. Had like a large, large, large scale operation. They used to have million dollar parties from from selling um, heroin back then, you know? The mecca for, for heroin in New York City at the time was the Lower East Side, mm -hmm. historically. And so, dudes had, you know, million dollar parties, Maserati parties since then, 70s into the 80s. Big, big people. So he was he was a member of that crowd, but mm -hmm. he lived where we from. And so, um, that's how he heard what was going on, and like he told you, that's how he reached out to us. What they were trying to do only intrigued them. And so he wanted to hear who these little kids that everybody's talking about. And then that's how we started messing with him. But um, that apprenticeship ended quickly because he was murdered about it 10 months, a year later, right? Like a year, church. Like a year and a couple of months. Mm. So I don't want to live this out. Excuse me, I'll cut you off. Another thing that made him stand out in the Louis Saka, everybody was getting money. You know what I'm saying? There was a lot of people. It was the fact that he was Dominican in a Puerto Rican predominantly neighborhood business. You understand yeah, what I'm trying to tell true. you? So him being Dominican, that stood out at that time. Like now you got a lot of Dominicans in the Lois side running around. But at that time he was like the only one, if not the only one, whoever else was down there was because he brought him from the Upper West Side. They Sorry to do that. Um, <clears throat> and he got murdered around that area? In the area you're from? Or he got murdered yeah. somewhere? Right in front of his building. Yeah, he got Where murdered right? uptown, not in the Louis side. He got murdered uptown in front of his building. His mom was coming around the corner when he, when that shit happened. I heard it through the window. I was talking to him on the phone. I was waiting for my shorty to bring me a, a mm -hmm. order of food. She went to buy some food. I'm talking to to the phone. He telling me, yo, Maka, we every time on, the, on Sundays, he used to buy the whole neighborhood tickets for the movie. Mm -hmm. 40, 50, whoever's outside, you want to go to the movie, we're going to get the last show. So it was Sunday. He was about to do that. He spoke to him, he calling me, I hear, Trrr! but the shit sounded too rapid. So I wasn't hearing no rapid shit like that in the hood. I'm like, yo, that shit sound crazy. It looked like they sound some oozy shit. I only used to hear that shit on TV. 
rapid though. I'm talking about fully automatic. You really don't hear. You hear it semi-automatic, but so he was like, "Where? Look out the window." I'm like, "For what?" He like, "I cut some. That could have been my cousin." I'm like, "I don't hear nobody screaming." He's like, "Yo, my nigga, look out the window." So I looked out the window and I saw Mark and Coho laid out, and that's like that. Two people like died. Yeah, him and Coho. Okay. They first got shot up together. They got killed together. Mm. They got shot up about a month and a half before that in a, in a drive-by where two people were killed and they were the two survivors. But they were hit. You know, it was AK-47, you know, shooting into a car, going in through one guy, coming out the other guy. Yeah. So they had broken bones. And so what he told you about when they got killed, they were already, they were still, they had still had stitches in them from the operations and the surgeries and the fucking all kind of skin grafts that they had to do when they were killed. Mm. Wow. Um, that was a heavy war, though. That was that was yeah. that war was way worse than what we were involved in. What yeah. was that war called? Are you allowed? No, to it wasn't. Not that it was called, but it was the heroin. It was over heroin, and it was in a time where, in the eighties, and in, in the eighties, you could have four murders and still be chilling on the block. You know, in the mm. 80s, you could have four murders and get six to 12 mm. and get work release, you know? So it was a time where, um, if you know, if you're criminal minded and you empowered with that information back then because, you know, you were doing a lot of stuff, man. You were, and you were probably getting away with a lot of stuff, you know, because of the laws and the different things that were. Think about how different New York City would be right now if there weren't cameras every two steps you take, you know? That's Just true. that one thing is stopping a whole lot of things from happening. The old ladies didn't call the cops. They didn't call the cops back in the days? No, they no. just called her, her friend and tell her who got killed. Oh, yeah? Like, yo, you got, such and such yeah. son got killed. Told you he wasn't going to make it through the summer. That type of shit. Real, real quick, did Michael Toom, did he look out for you guys? Did y'all really rock with him? Like, he took care of you? He held you guys down? Oh, yeah, Was he one of those fact. people that, that like, yeah. he looked out for us? No, no, yeah. that that that's a fact. Like, he used to call us his son. And mm -hmm. I didn't take no no offense to that. I was proud of that. Like he took us on the, like he took us, he heard about it. He said, Hold on. At the beginning it was, you know, he had selfish interests, you understand, to an extent. Well, you know, trying to come up. Drug dealer. We hustling, put him under the wing. So now he wanted us to open up a dope spot up there. In retrospect, I come to the conclusion that he was already knowing that it was heavy down there in the Low East Side because that war was going on for years. But we was, you know, young. He never involved us with that shit. Um, so he was already try trying to get different locations, you understand, to generate money or whatever. That's what I come up with now looking back. So he wanted us to open up a block, and we did. But um, Dope was different. So after we sold, like, 40 bundles at, you know, 13 going 14 and shit like that. We making $600 each at that date. You know, you count that by five, three Gs. We like, we don't need no more than this. But he looking at it like, yo, y'all got to stay there the whole hours, bro. Like, he trying to do numbers. So then he ain't found, like, no real interest in that. But he already had love for us, so he put it under the wing. So he like, listen, I'm going to give y'all money just to go to school. Because he knew my mother. He already took a, 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 a liking to him, love, you know. So he used to give his... um. $2,000 a week each to go to school. Just go to school, and when you come out, you can hang out with us. And um, so he'll give us 20 bundles each. We give it to somebody, and we keep the money. You understand what I'm trying to tell mm -hmm. you? So, And then um, we'll hang out with him. So whenever he went in the restaurant and ate, we ate. Whenever he went in the sneaker store and bought sneakers, he bought us sneakers. We had access to his cars, access to the cribs and shit like that. Mm -hmm. and that was it. And we used to just sit down and listen to all his stories. So... It became so, company, really, you know. So, in his, my bad, in his, in his, in his, in his way of thinking, you know, it's, it's a, he ain't really was doing as a favor, but in his mind, he was doing the best he can. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, we didn't know no better, so he looked out for us, and the way he knew and how he could, you know what I'm saying? Probably he shouldn't be talking about all the murders and millions and showing us all those cars and giving us that money that easy. <laughs> but he thought he was doing us a favor, <clears throat> keeping us out the street and talking that school shit. Right, right. You know, after he got shot up and I and I was um, hanging out with him in the Bronx, in the crib, in what people call a trap house now, and um, somebody had to give him some money, so he told me to go get it. And I felt like, yeah, I'm about to move up. This motherfucker talking to me about go get a bag. You know, and um, 
So he told me, yo, don't open the bag. Just go get it and bring it back. You know, at the time was the big, great Metro One phone with the, with the black antenna. Mm -hmm. You like, like you working out when you use the phone, you know. Mm -hmm. So, so I went to the, I went to the place to pick up the money. The guy gave me the money. I got in a cab. I call him. I tell him I'm on the way back. And he told me you didn't open the bag. I was like, nope. And he said, right, don't open. And I was like, I'm not opening this shit for sure. Hung up. Opened the bag. Saw a bunch of money in there. Oh. Took it to him. We counted it. After we finished counting it, he says, "Here, it's a thousand dollars for you," and here's a thousand dollars for your friend, which was was Tito, you know. So, um, so I'm out. I'm like, "Yeah, I got my first G." You know what I'm saying? That, that was kind of easy. I just went to go get some money, right? That's how I was thinking at the time, you know. So, I decided I'm gonna invest my thousand and flip it. So I had a friend, <laughs> Timmy. And uh, he convinced me this dude had some 38s for sale, for $200. And I calculated I could get 400 for them shit, so I gave him the whole G. He came back and said he got robbed. To this day, I don't know if he really got robbed or not. He's still my friend on since the second grade. Mm. But I lost my G. I was sad about that shit. I think he told market. And so the next day, we meet up for our regular lunch at the restaurant, get the dessert going. He pull out his Louis Vuitton bag. He throws another stack on the table. He says, "Don't buy no guns, bro." And I didn't even, I didn't even say that. I just, yes, him. <laughs> that shit right in my pocket. But learned the lesson there, you know. Um, that to me, that showed me he cared a little more, you know. Like, mm. give you another shot with your money, bro. You know, get it together. And you know, um, although we learned all these things from him, he never was like teaching us nothing. Even when during and during the war of the Lower East Side, sometimes we would. Miss him, and we take a cab down there and run into him, and he'll get us out of there or have somebody take us out of there, cab or however it was. So, you know, he, he did have love for us. On top of that, I like to say I'm still friends to this day with his brother and his entire family, you know? Like, like if uh, we never skipped a beat, and those are people, you know, for 30, 35 years, um, those are the people you could count on if you still know them, you know? Friends are meant to be used, not abused, I like to say. <laughs> mm. That's a good one. R real quick, did y'all have a? There was there when you guys were under him. Did you guys were under a name? Did you guys have a name? Was there a crew name y'all had? No, no. Okay, got it, got it. So when did the yellow top crew start uh, come, come into place? You know, the police named us and the and the, and the, and the press named us um, that. You know, people used to say, yeah, you know, hey, yellow top crew, but we would never. Is it top or tape? The Yellow Top Crew, YTC. Mm. Oh, that's so, good so job, you know, people people said that, and um, and it stuck. But we were never no real gang. We wasn't no gang, and and and. Hey, stop playing! Come on, whoa! Listen, listen, Jay, come on. <laughs> I know you try to be cool. We, we not we not trying to promote no. violence. I heard it. I know, I know. Jay, I know what, what was the name of the crew, man? YTC. What was the name of the crew before YTC? That y'all was just cool. There See, was no crew. It was, it was just, just you and my man? It's me, him, and two of his brothers, and my brother, and my brother's brother-in-law, get it? And cousin. That's a crew, you know that, right? Nah, well, I got you. I'm just saying, we weren't a gang, brother. It wasn't, um... I got you, brother, I got you. It wasn't, um... We're gonna meet every Friday, and we got a... We got a I raccoon hat on, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> no handshakes, like, no, 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 no handshakes, no. none of that shit. No, yeah, 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 oh, no, so no, it's no. more like a family, then? Family's the right word. Too. Got it. Got it. That's so that's why you get the big bucks. That's right, family. You got. You figured it out. <laughs> no, 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 stop it. So, you, so, so, so. All right. So then, n when did it start getting spooky for you guys? Like that's what G was I, like. When did it start turning up for you guys? Because now you guys, um, you getting money. You know, mm -hmm. you are selling crack. You are getting money. You know what I mean? Um, when did it start really? Pumping for you when guys. the cops started coming around. Well, the, yeah, the cops started coming around. What you know, like, cause we we like and flip the script. We like steps. You know, you like to paraphrase a lot. Oh, yeah. You know, and it's past your bedtime, like you said oh, earlier. Yeah. You know, something. I, I, you know, we got violent for us very quickly. You know, <laughs> yeah, <it's> straight, like. <laughs> it got violent for us very quickly. Um, from so that's for me. I don't know. He, you know, we we we. You know, you could look at the same thing and see t two different things. So for me, that's my answer. When it got violent, everything changed after that. But why did it get violent? Was it people in the neighborhood that disliked y'all? Was it another team? When, like, you, when you say um, when it got spooky, like when we started be like, oh, we kind of into deep shit and all that. Into deep, where, where, where you have to play with them things. Uh, 
Yeah, like that's talking about spooky. Cause you guys getting money. Was it was it people in the neighborhood? You know, was it yeah. ex friends? Like you know what I'm saying? Like was it like when did things started to when did it start to get a little violent? I mean, it got violent quick, but I wouldn't say it got spooky at that time. I ain't trying to sound cool or none of that shit, mm-hmm. but for me it got spooky when I got shot. That's when I said, Oh shit, I, I whoa, they they hitting back right now. Cause we had just a tr- we was just hitting first. We catch wind. I know you put in work. You talking about you gonna do something to me? Like the young boys say now, you made me panic. You understand what I'm trying That's to tell right. you? So I'm moving on that quick. So we had a long stretch where every time we heard somebody was plotting or whatever, we was moving quick on that. You understand what I'm saying? And then, you know, like I say today, ain't nobody from the family, like you still, you know, nobody from the team, nobody got killed. Everybody, they mom should be thanking us at the end of the day right now. You understand what I'm saying? Because you got to pick the, the 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 lesser evil or two, right? If your kid hit the street, now you just praying that nothing happened to him, right? That he get killed. And my grandmother always said, I'd rather take you commissary money than flowers. You're already in the street. I don't want you to do none of that, but if so, none of none of none of our guys ever got murdered on the street. Basically, judged by twelve and carried by six. Yeah, right. in other words, got you. So when I got shot, it got spooky for me. So when you you got what age you got shot? I got shot like probably two months, like 19. 19, what happened? To bring us to that day. Um, Basically, in a nutshell, a dude put a, a, a head out on us. They tried to get him first. They shot at him, he played dead. I'm thinking it was some random shit that happened or whatever. I'm not really putting, you know what I mean? Putting too much um emphasis on what happened. He's like, yo, the dudes came through, so I'm like, all right, like, you know, that's what happens. You know, they didn't come off in, on our block, but Hey, I thought about it like it was some dudes walking through the neighborhood randomly. Let's say y'all walking through the neighborhood, y'all not from there. Y'all somebody make y'all panic, you got the ratchet, you let it go. That's how I look. I ain't think it was a target situation. So one day I'm on the block and um, I'm talking. I'm actually being kind of spiteful because I'm giving my man's girl some money every week. But she used to always talk about, oh, it's $20, $40 short. We give her $500 a week just so she could take care of herself. I'm gonna do it because he was locked up. He ain't had no. So that's five hundred dollars just for her to take care of herself. Besides us paying for commissary and lawyers and everything else. Mm-hmm. But the bitch used to be like, "Oh, they gave me four sixty and and I need twenty dollars for the cab." So I was like, "You know what? You playing game." But still, my man, girl, that's the one he chose. So well, we gonna go with it. Give this bitch five hundred dollars singles, my nigga. Like five hundred, and so she could count them. She's dead. But doing that spiteful shit. Instead of going to BBQ, because the chick just pulled up like, yo, that's got a BBQ. I'm like, nah, nah, chill. We'll get that $500 in single. Niggas was walking up. I just felt the vibe. I told my little man, yo, go get the gun. Why? Some dude's looking funny. So he like, just go in the building. So when I'm walking in the building, I'm looking at it like, they're going to shoot the block up. I'm not thinking I'm the target. So I'm going to feel like a sucker, like I left everybody outside. As soon as I turned around, the dude thought that I had the gun. But my man said I put it up because police kept running around. He just started shooting. That's when I got shot up. Police was coming up the block. Told him freeze. He shot it out with police, mm. and um, that was it. Giuliani didn't even come check me. He just went and checked the police. That nigga didn't even give a fuck about me. Did the, did the person that shot the he he shot the police? He shot the police. Me and the police was in the same hospital. Did he die? Did nah, they he got shot in the hand. But he still took him to the hospital. You know they're gonna make it look crazy. He got shot. <laughs> what about the guy that did the shooting? He got caught. Oh. So, that's crazy. Uh, so you played dead. Yeah, yeah. Smart. Thank so, you. I have my moments. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get out of here. <laughs> so you played dead, and then this is my man right here, though, man. You just was on some singles. You see, spiteful. You see, being spiteful. <laughs> Count the singles. Five hundred singles. That's, that's a quick lot. karma that came back around. Yeah, yeah, quick yeah. karma. Yeah, no, but, but, wait. What I'm confused about is that why. What makes people put a hit out on people? Like you, was it? Where did that come from? Was it just hate? Did you fuck one of their girls? Like, what was that from? I mean, that's that particular situation and about that. I be, I got a little bit of all that. You know what I mean? Whether your girl liked me or some shit like that. But <laughs> that particular situation was a dude that just wanted to open up the block. You understand? And ironically, this was a dude that we that took a chance on us a few years before. We're giving us a brick on consignment when I was like fourteen. He was like sixteen. You dig? Oh. So then. We did something for them because they was being extorted and all of that. So we basically took care of that problem for them. So then he went to jail for being dumb and trying to like, he posted on the gram and the gram wasn't even up at that time. You hear me? So 
He went to jail, you dick. <laughs> Chill out, man. Chill out. Tell you the truth, though. <laughs> Chill out. Both of y'all got in jail, bro. I don't know. That was it, though. No, I mean, I say that because what happened was he was supposed to be the backup gun. Dude was, they already did what they had to do to the dude. Now, what happens when you shoot a gun and you're around? You're going to duck. You're not gonna, and then when you stop hearing the gunshot, you're going to get up. So people heard the gunshots. They ducked. When they stopped hearing the gunshot, they got up, and he walking up like, and shoot the nigga two times. Mm -hmm. And then drop his beeper and go back for the beeper. And he lives around the corner from the fucking oh, where we he did he this just, shit. So, sloppy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So All he still ain't do no like time that. for that. At He got locked up. They went through the, you know, whatever, whatever. He came back home. So what happened was um, when he was giving us the brick, he was overcharging us. But we were still doubling our money. So we didn't really give a fuck. And we was moving that shit super fast. You understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So, and we was young. So, you know. When he came home, we knew the prices. So now he thinking we going back to business. So we like, we go back to business, but you got to, these are the prices, nigga. Like, you got to either mm. match this or beat this. He couldn't really do it. You understand? It wasn't beneficial for him. And we kept pushing, and I guess he held that gripe. So then he came up with a plan of wanting to put dope on our block. So we was like, nah, I don't think that. Even though we wasn't selling dope, we was like, nah, because. He wanted to pay, too, but. Yeah. But the whole thing is that you're going to sit there, study us, and come up with a plan and get us, our head knocked off because he was that type of dude and then stay yeah. with the whole neighborhood. Yeah. So that we was like, nah, we don't really want you that close. Mm. And he thought he had the bright idea of putting out the head. That's how that head came out. But but, I, but when, once he was told no, he did open up anyway on, another, on a few other blocks. Yeah. And that was a no-no too. So after that, he's like, that's when he, he, he started plotting. Yeah, what happened was he started fucking with crack. And he was giving his mans, his little soldiers that was busting guns. Like, he ain't fuck with the cracks, but he was like, y'all open up the crack. You got your own crack spot. So you got this dude under the the gauge. Now you got your own spot. You run with me. Plus, he's a shooter. But we like, nah, you can't sell crack here. Like, what? So we did a few of that. You know, we used to do walkthroughs through the neighborhood. Like, who the fuck you working for? Take your pack, whatever. Shut this shit down. Tell him to come see me. That type of shit. So now he like, damn, these niggas they ain't even let me sell crack or none of that shit. I guess, you know what I mean? But how many blocks did you guys have on lock? Uh, I really, I really don't know. Because um, remember it's a family. Remember it's your brother-in-law. No, 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 I know, I know, but brothers. I'm saying, I'm saying, brother. remember? I'm saying, I know, I remember. I know, but I'm saying, you know, somebody asked me that earlier today, and if you, if you, you know, we, we were, we had 95th Street, and we were 110th Street, 107th Street. We didn't let nobody sell between certain blocks. Mm. You know, we were in Nyack. You know, so um, Nyack, New York. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. And so um, at the time, you know, that was a big place to be when you have so much of was missing over there, you know, again and being young. Um, we put three hundred cracks in the in a bag of barbecue wise barbecue potato chips and get on that bus. Um, let me ask you guys a question. You know, cause they say Dominicans or Spanish people, you know, are the connects. So you guys had to connect, you know, you guys became the connect. You know, that's a very serious yeah, question. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh we everybody we, it is impossible to do what we were doing without a connect yes that person never did no time though Respect. and um as far as becoming a connect he he did i didn't move into that that weight thing i used to get a lot of weight and break it all down mm, um but crack. he did yeah he did expand into doing that um i i used to like the breakdown better than to be selling weight you know did, did and, and you know you know how to cook? You oh you... yeah, of course. Oh, see? Let me take my jacket off real quick. Oh, I used yeah. to um I was very I was a very good cook. Very good. Yeah. <laughs> Who taught you how to cook? Who taught you how to cook, Django? Uh, a, a head on the street. What? Yeah. I wow. used to I used to have Walter White status cooking. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> He ain't the smooth guy. He's the smooth guy. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I was doing that, but um, it became uh after a while when you, I'm sure you know, it don't matter what you're doing, and you could be super, super, super successful, but it could become a burden too. You know, yeah. you could get tired of counting, um, uh, every week, 
singles and 100,000 singles and another 100. And what do I do with them? And who do I pay with them? And let me give extra 100 or 200 to this one so we could squash that debt, you know? So it becomes a... Mm. Yeah, more, I gotta go cook more. I'm over here, I gotta go back to cook what? You know, it becomes, um, it became a monster that we couldn't keep up with. Was your mom aware of what was going on at this time? Or, or she didn't? Um, I don't think so. And she, you know, I, I tried to talk to my mother a lot on when I was getting trailer visits upstate, but she always stops me when she thinks I'm going in that direction. Cause she, I don't think she really just wants to hear it, you know? So mm. she just blocks that out. Now, 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 um, when did you get, you got locked up? Did you get locked up? Yeah. Okay, who got locked up first? Because, you know, you guys story. We got locked up a bunch of one, times. One, one and the same, both interesting. Yeah, yeah. So I, That's I, why we know, both here. Yeah, yeah. Bonus well, right here. Bonus. Yeah, he's a yeah. big bonus right here. <laughs> he is. He's a big bonus. I know. I can tell. Yeah. He's my man. Heavy. <laughs> so so when did you got, when, uh, when you got locked up to do your... The big town, like what did you do to get locked up? What were you accused of? Well, I got arrested for for that guy that he was just talking to you about for his attempted murder. For yeah, I got arrested for that. And um yeah. what happened is what happened, what happened, what happened, listen, my brother, okay, you know Jay, what happened? Well, I, I could that. I could put it like this to you. Check what happened, bro. He made a move on us. Two days later, we made a move on him. He was shot nine times. Neck, chest, scrotum, a bunch of places, right? And two days later, and and the shooter got caught on the scene, and I got out of the scene. You know, um, two of us is walking this way, and three hundred people running this way to see where what happened. You know, so that was uh, a little telltale sign. Mm. So, um, but I got arrested two days later. So, as far as this case, I got arrested two days after that shooting, and everybody else got arrested more or less a month later. They wrapped up the case early because the violence was escalating. When that, when that guy got shot those nine times, three days before that is when two separate shootings occurred, also related to, to Yellow Top, which were the attempts on our lives. And in that same month, a cop got shot, as he described to you. So um, now on that day when he got shot and the cop came around the corner and I got by him and the shooter stood over there, the person that was escorting me in and out of the scene bust off also, and the cop calls in a ten thirteen, which is a officer, you know, officer down, officer in distress, and that um created every possible police officer that's on the scene or around the area to come to react to that shooting. So by now you got two police shootings on yellow top, attempted murder of this dude, attempted murder of him, attempted murder of me. This is all back to back. It was heating up so much that they just wrapped everything up quick. You got you didn't you got shot? No, I played dead. You played dead, so you shot. I've done that three times, yeah. Hmm. Mm. I tried to do that shit when I got shot. My body was <laughs> trying to hit that shit. That shit made me run. <laughs> so, so he got hit in the head. He got the bullet right. slowed down with the door, but he got hit in the head. Yeah, my, that shit went through here, and it got stuck right here. Oh, oh my god! What? Right. Right. So that same guy that caused that mm -hmm. ended up getting hit two days later, nine yeah. times. Yeah, yeah I flew he was somebody in, in from Puerto Rico. Say it again? Flew someone in from Puerto Rico. Being that the dude grew up with us and he knew us, so we couldn't just approach him. He wasn't going to let us just approach him. You understand what I'm trying to tell you? So he knew that we was coming. Once he realized, the dude put the head out. I didn't know where the fuck that shit came from. I thought it was, you know, we, we've been putting in work for years. We don't know who finally, you know, took the initiative to come at us. So while I'm in the in the hospital, I'm I'm good. I could have, you know, I could have left the same night, but they keep you observation for a day and they got this shit through my penis, a tube. Mm, yeah, so I'm scared to take that shit out, but I want to take it out because I know homicide's coming in the morning. You understand what I'm trying to tell you? So I'm trying to get the fuck out the hospital because I'm good. I don't want to deal with homicide. Sure enough, homicide was right there. Bing, all right? Because every time I'm like, man, I fuck around, pull out. I thought I was going to pull out an intestine and all that shit mm -hmm. with my. So I was like, all right, cool, leave that. Boom, homicide came, bitch, came right there immediately, took the tube out. Oh, yeah, we want to just talk to you, Tito. We knew him, right? We've been through this fucking process on a regular. They take us to the precinct. By the time we get there, the lawyer called. They already know they can't talk. I could tell them, niggas, I did it, but my lawyer already told you can't talk to me. So everything here is no good. So they knew that, but they'll take it. So what, this particular time, they did some grimy shit. 
they took me to the precinct. They made me sit in a room. When I sat in a room, they had a uh, one of them shits, like the white walls like that. like, a, And they had the whole detail of the hit. Such and such, pay such and such. Because the kid that shot the cop, he gave everybody up. So they had the whole shit on the, on the, on the board. Like, he paid this, like, whole little pyramid. So I'm saying to myself, oh, shit. This nigga put the hit out? And I knew it was true because we had like a cold war. It wasn't, I just smoked a blunt with the dude like the day before. You understand what I'm saying? On the block, chilling, talking like, oh, you should come out the floor with her. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was that type of situation. But we knew that, you know, but we was playing roles. So, um, thinking about it, you almost went out like market like that. Because that's what the same shit market was doing. But, um, yeah. so I was like, oh, shit. So when I came out the hospital, broom, I told him, yo, son, look, this nigga did that shit. Ooh, we like, where I, I. So we was trying to figure out how we going to get close to him. We flew a kid in from Puerto Rico. And then I had a car. I had just bought a beam on it. But I bought a crash at the time. It was that type. So I had to go get it inspected and shit after I fixed it up. So I was in Terrytown when I came back. They was like, yo, you heard about it? I'm like, heard about what? We got that nigga. So one of the young boys from the block was telling me, I'm like, word? And he told me they already had did that movie and shit. But that's how that went. Two days later, you get locked up. Um, somebody told? Somebody told? Everybody. That's, yeah, somebody. Of course. There's old ladies in the window sometimes. <laughs> you know? So you locked up and then um, you go to trial. I'm presuming. Or, or no, you just go to trial. I just had that attempted murder case, but um, they knew what they were doing, so they put me in a part where only high profile cases are. You know, under a judge that gives no bail, and so they already knew that they were gonna add a superseding indictment. They want to make sure you're in that court part so that you know you're facing maximum penalty. And that um, task force and judge were responsible for. Wild Cowboys, the Jerry Curl Gang, you know, the Purple City, Purple Shower Top, Posse. Shower Posse. So they had their numbers in, you know, but they have the same judge with them, and so they um they was they was cleaning up shop. Uh, and and real quick because you know you guys you know you guys are very smooth when you talk. Um, when you guys find out how much stuff did they have on you guys? Everything. Drugs, drugs, murder, weapons, everything. We, we, I think there was ten homicides on the indictment, and um, every kind of drug crime that you could think about. Do you remember how many of you guys got indicted? Forty, forty. They say forty-eight, but it was forty-one on our indictment, and then probably like seven other dudes, like the Hicks that was from the hood, and they just made it in a newspaper saying yeah, 48. because they 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 in a picture or in a, happened to be saying what's up mm -hmm. to you in the surveillance. Nah, it's whatever they say, you know. And they and, and the media named y'all Yellow Top Crew. Yeah. You guys didn't name yourself that. No. That's just, mm. Yellow Top Crew. The media named you guys that. All right, so you go to the trial. What you what, what happened? No, we didn't go to Some people pleaded guilty. What did you some do? People, I pleaded guilty. Um, 15 in life. You have 15 in life. Yeah. 12 to 36. 12 to 36. Oh, snap. So now you're on the island. I was on the island for three years. I was, I, I heard I heard you talking about the island. You know, because we had a couple of people up here talking about the island. Yeah. You know, we had the Latin Kings up here. They yeah, talked about the experience. It. I watched it. You, you know, we had the Bloods up here. Yeah, we shot, yeah, Benny's a, you know, solid, solid people we had yeah. up here. Um, Just now listening, you know, like I said, to your interview, you said that, you you witnessed a lot of things. It was yellow and red. But but yeah, you went on the island. Ninety four. Ninety four. A, a hot ass year on the island. And what role did you play? Were you just? I didn't cool? play any role. I've never been in any, in any gang. Any gang. Yeah, I mean, so so you just. I, I, you know, when you're on Rikers Island, people um recognize who is who based on what is what, and then dudes that are getting money, they click up together and talk about what they talk about and compare what they compare about, you know? Same women, cars, you know, whatever it is, you know? Mm -hmm. You ain't thinking about, you're thinking about getting out. I ain't thinking about, um you know, you get more time in jail and in prison fucking around. You yeah, know? Heard. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. So... Um, I try to do my thing smoothly, man. I don't see no sense in me being in a, in a further 
uh, and a more dire situation like being in the box. I'm going to try to hang out in population. There's a little bit of something out here, you know, food, music. In mm. box, you ain't got nothing but roaches and, and the lights on 24-7. Shit is mm. torturous. Yo, so how do you survive in jail, though? Because, you know, I, I hear a lot of stories about, you know, that time where, you know, if, if you're not a part of a certain gang and stuff like that, they, they kind of consider it as food, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, well, um, you know, I think that's overhyped. Um, people respect you when you stand on your own, people anywhere. Mm -hmm. And people could recognize um, what you made of anywhere also, you know. You could, you you, you wear what you are, and you and you get around here and there. I'm, yes, they teach. Like, th I heard them interviews. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't know. I know a lot of the guys they spoke about, like Wayno from the original. I know Benny, me, and I know he made that transition because I used to work in transitional services with him and Fishgirl. Mm -hmm. Dick. So when he was studying for that theology and all of that. Um, so I was with a lot of these dudes. And these dudes is just human dudes, bro. They just felt obligated to put it, not 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 on no sucker way, but, you know, they, they fell into that whole norm. Now, in the housing areas that we were in, we was in CMC houses, that banging shit really didn't dominate in there. You understand what I'm saying? It was more about money and shit had to do with, it was a cause. But you had Dead Eye in there, the 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 one of the founders. He was there, mm -hmm. but he was they were in they were in gang banging. In there. And their dudes was it was so heavy that you know you have a high ranking Latin king and a high ranking blood, despite the fact that in the population heavy heavy. Because we get escorted with a captain and a CO when you're a CMC house. That's where you have Pappy, Fat Cat, where the nigga put the hit out on the parole from. All that type of story, then all that. Those was the houses that you were in, um, Chicky, Paulie, like major dude that came out in the newspaper that was accused for making a lot of money and controlling and shit like that. That was there. So it was all money talking there. You understand what I'm trying to tell you? Mm -hmm. Like, how we gonna get out this situation? You know, like how we could get the bag in here? Like, that's the type of. It wasn't really gang banging there. But now when I went to HDM Bing, one a one, and you was Hispanic, you were then going to the yard. I got a lot of ego. That shit, you know what I'm saying? I got a lot of pride. That shit could be your hospital rock. I went to the yard. Luckily, nothing never happened. I was in old Superman, but they were shocked at the beginning. Like, what the fuck this dude out here? And he's kind of fresh. I got a Pele on, Tim's, Chuck. They like, who the fuck this nigga with? But Wayno and this dude named, oh, we was already neighbors talking. This was right when Wayno was about to turn blood. So you're like, nah, 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 it's people chill. He ain't with them because they was, you know, he ain't like he no nieta. Like, it was like, I just came in f with a group of dudes. Fuck, I'm about to join another group of dudes for. Right. Like, I'm trying to figure this shit out right now, you dig? So, that gang banging shit didn't really affect me like that. You know what I'm saying? Or even him, because it wasn't running in them houses heavy. You had big, high ranking dudes, but it wasn't that politic in there concerning that. Niggas will blow your head off for money and shit like that, but not for that. Mmm. The CMC house, you got the worst people, according to the media and the police department, together, you know, as a, the, the most um, maximum security cases. Anybody that has a cop body is CMC, you know? Anybody that has a scape on their record is CMC. Anybody that has multiple anything, serial rapists, serial killer, CMC. So we've been around that crowd, and that's how I've ended up around so many um, real serial killers. Because they were hot, well, you don't have a choice where you're gonna be housed as. Ten people, three of them are serial killers, you know, and that's who you know, and that's who's there. So um, those were CMC houses, and I didn't, I never looked at it like that. But he's right about what he's saying because that gang stuff really didn't exist up there unless you were a shot caller, and that's why you're there in order to separate you from everybody else, you know, because mm. of your mm -hmm. influence. Um, real quick, uh. I heard a story. Um, I don't know if you guys want to elaborate on it or not or how much you want to tell about it. But we had a guy on here that had a run-in with you guys before, which, you know, um, which was Gangster Lou. Yeah. Um, he said that the uh, issue when he spoke about being shot um, wasn't, I guess, me uh, meant for him. But do you guys remember going at it with whomever he was with or was it him himself that you guys had an issue with or... You know, like what, what, what happened there? No, I wasn't with him at all. He ain't had nothing to do with it. He ain't lie. I seen his interview. He ain't mm -hmm. lie. He went and held this man down. 
Oh, yeah. And got shot. Like he said, that's what he meant. He got shot first, but it wasn't for him. And actually, he was upset with them dudes from what I heard, you think, mm-hmm. because they kind of like didn't give him the full details of what they was dealing with. You understand what I'm trying to tell you? They mm-hmm. just, yo, uh, and I don't tell you, yo, we about to go get into some real situation. You know what I mean? I just did some dumb shit down there. I know they coming. He didn't give them, they didn't give him that. And then, like he said, I didn't even know that part, that they left him for dead. He said that the dudes ran and left him. Remember, mm-hmm. he said that shit in that interview. I didn't know that much. But he kept it official through the whole situation. Absolutely. You know what I mean? He kept it official. They took dudes up to the ambulance. He was like, nah. Niggas didn't get convicted for that. They came downtown and, you know, they they they, they, ain't, they ain't do no sucker shit. He kept it. It was a street real beef, you know what I mean? But then everybody coexisted because it really wasn't between us. You know what I'm saying? And the dudes that really had something to do with it wasn't trying to do nothing. You know what I'm saying? So why the mm-hmm. fuck get yourself involved with that when we got bigger shit to be doing? So that was it. That was over some money? Uh, actually, what happened was a dude from the block on 141st, he... um. He got a girl, he had a girl in my neighborhood, a baby moms. His baby moms was fighting another girl from the neighborhood that happened to be the sister of one of our guys. And then he jumped in instead of letting the two girls and slapped her. So now he react and we react. You understand what I'm saying? Like if they if you my man, they slap your sister, you going, I'm going with you. You dig what I'm saying? And that's what happened. It was over behind that shit. I ain't even smashed shorty, nothing. I ain't had nothing to do with none of that. <laughs> yeah, I took a loss. We had lost like $25,000 on that f- bullshit. But, but you said that he kept it real. You, you, he, Yo, he kept it tall. Respect. Yeah, Respect. Lou kept it tall. You know what I mean? Respect. No sucking or none of that. Just call it what it is. If you would have did some sucking shit, I would have said, Yo, that nigga did some sucking shit. He kept it tall. Mm. Gotta call it how it is. Mm. So, moving forward, you guys. You know, in jail with some crazy. You know, what's what's the experience in jail? Like G G X. You know, what I mean, you you were more like just trying to come home. Sure, I mean, that's that's the whole plan. That's the plan. That should be the plan for everybody. You know. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to come home too. I, ain't, I wasn't trying to be no jail celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> you know, how to do start building a reputation when they get to jail, and um. You know, you just hear about the reputation, but why? Some people just doing, a lot of people, they're just insecure. They're just trying to establish, you know. Hmm. Uh, but you could you could accomplish that with your mind. And you don't have to be regressing further and further right. in order to do that. So I chose to do it with my mind. That's how I did it, bro. Yeah, you want to know this funny shit that you were talking about, Lou, not to go back and that. The dude that we were beefing with, this shit is their brand right here. <laughs> I don't mm-hmm. talk to them, nigga. But I support <laughs> <laughs> I don't agree a hundred percent with what he said or what he said about that gentleman because nobody in their mother was praying to get caught in order to avoid him, you know. But um, that's what he want to say. As Amen. far as what you know, he said that you know we were we were hoping to get arrested. And oh, not hell no! Who was hoping? So shit. I don't that's agree that, with. I wouldn't even pay attention to that. You know, I mean, that was. But whatever, man. I don't, you know, I don't really care I what the story is. That shit. The truth, you know. Yeah, Open about to get nah, 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 Words nah, only yeah. have the amount of power that you give them, you know. So I wouldn't even like think that. about that shit. <laughs> he said that in the interview. Our interview, he said that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He like yo. Yeah, he says I ain't even think about that shit because I, I, I thought this it was man' cool. mind is a dangerous mind, man. You got to watch this guy, man. Yeah. Man. Oh, but so I so I right, but at the end of the day, it really wasn't meant for him. Bro. Nah, it wasn't no, meant no, for no, him. Man. 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 I used man. to rock his music, bro, happily, you know, like on some official. Every car I had his, every car I had, and every cabs that we had on deck waiting just to go to one place or another to pick up, um, or everything that we needed them to pick up had that mob style tape in it. So I was wow. a fan, you know. Wow. He he, it was a mistake. That's all. Respect, respect. You guys in prison, you guys uh, become friends with anybody. I mean, I know that we talk about the Central Park Five, um, but before that, like, I heard that you were cool with like Machine with with ODB, with a few yeah, yeah, ODB. He 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 um he shut me down. I can't say we were friends, you know, but we were there together. I got him his first phone call. Uh, he was one time in the cell below me and one time in the cell above me. 
and um, he just, uh, he, you know, I'm sure you heard the story. I try to get him outside so we could politic about me, like, everything that we still trying to do, you know, getting money. And he get paid to talk. And he said, yeah, I get paid to talk. And I'll be, now I'm like, yeah, I understand <laughs> that now, you know, me too. Was there any beef in jail? Did you guys have any beefs in jail? I did. I have had beefs in. I have had beefs in. Um, prison. I was stabbed up. What? And, huh? You were stabbed up? Yeah, I got stabbed up in Sing Sing. I got jumped and stabbed up in Sing Sing. And um, I've had beef over phones. I've had fights, gotten cut over fighting for phones. You know, that's just the uh, the mentality. Um, what you got stabbed in Sing Sing for? I got stabbed in Sing Sing for street beef. You know, you 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 Sing Sing is a prison. That you bump into everybody that you don't want to bump into. The motherfucker you took a bike from when you were six years old. <laughs> the bully you ran away from when you was eight years old. Everybody that you, everybody yeah. that's the dumping ground, <sighs> you know. So, and it was the most corrupt, uh, and historically the most corrupt prison in New York State. You know, you could buy pussy, you could buy all kind of shit and things. You got you got dudes with straight cats in their cells, you know. Um, so anything goes down in there, and everything. You got double O sevens for sale. And you were just you you do you. It was street beef and and you remember where you was at like you were. I was in the yard. I knew it was gonna happen. I went outside anyway. I suffered from the same unfortunate machismo as the next Latin dude sitting next to me. So uh, I said I have to have to confront this. And I went to the yard. And then I saw it. And then I waited. And then on the way back, it, you know, I was getting ready with what I had and. It's three of them, and one grabbed me, and two dudes stabbed me with ice picks, and I fell on the stairs, and they were coming for more. And at that point, I knew I wasn't a hero or a super villain, so I just kept pushing myself down the stairs to put space between us. And then the alarm sounded, and all the cops came running. The cops used to avoid that tunnel and that yard because a lieutenant had got hit in the face and got cut up in the face. And that's letting the COs know, like, it, anybody could get it in this tunnel, Anybody could get it. So that's where it happened with me. Mm. And uh, I was ready for it, so I had homemade shit on. And all they were hitting me with ice picks, they didn't penetrate far enough to cause any damage. So they broke the skin, but, you know, the frames stood the same. They broke the skin, but the frames stood the same. <laughs> you, um, who, who did you become friends with in there? That you know, because you say that you were in, like, well, not really friends, but I, I you know, you you said you worked with uh, this, uh, who you worked with? You said worked with some guy that said he ate, he chopped up and ate pussy. Oh, oh Artie Shawcroft, yeah, yeah, him, and then I mean, who was in there that that when you met them, you heard about them, but then when you met them, they were like, Son of Sam, David Berkowitz, for mm -hmm. real. He had New York City under pressure. He had curfew in New York City, you know, mm -hmm. during his era. Mm -hmm. And you hear all of this. It's the same with everybody. You know, you hear, you know, I done heard about Murder Mike's. Murder Mike, Murder Mike, A Block, Murder Mike, A Block. You go to Murder, you go to A Block and you see Murder Mike and he's a little white boy like this that's inside for burglary, you know? <laughs> so sometimes <laughs> reputations, you know, go way beyond, good or bad. And so when I, when you meet Son of Sam, you like, what the fuck? But he's, he's a dude that don't talk about much unless it has to do with Christianity or the Bible. You know, that's it. Mm. He go on visits, eight hours and eight hours. They got a Bible open, whomever's visiting him, and that's what they into. So he's been doing that for 30 years, man. I have to respect that. He got a better walk than me. You know what I'm saying? I've seen it and been there. He don't watch TV. He get marriage proposals. He doesn't accept them. Uh, he's walking his walk. That's how he feels he's, he's, he's making, you know, right with what he's done in life. Mm. And everybody got a different road to travel, you know? Some of us um, get there and some of us don't. He got there where he understands what he did. He don't go to parole. He don't go to, he go to, he has a parole here every two years and he don't go. So when you don't go to parole, you definitely letting him know, okay, what you do. You know, that's the only chance you got and you're not showing up for it. So there's a lot of, I've been in a lot of places where I've been able to I feel rich from the people that I've met, some of whom to other people are unworthy, but I learned a lot. I got a lot, a lot, a lot of knowledge from different people that is worth a lot, man. And that's gotten me through. You can learn anywhere you go. That's the lesson I learned. 
Um, so, how much time you did? Fifteen years. Fifteen. Yeah, I got. I did twelve. I got seventeen years in. I'm about to go turn myself in again. Wait, wait, hold on. Dum dum dum. Seriously? Unfortunately. Next week. Oh my god. I turn myself in. I'm actually out on a three hundred thousand dollar bill right now. Stop playing for I wish I was playing, you heard? <laughs> I wish I was playing. <laughs> well, what are you accused of doing? Actually, um, the same thing that I was accused of doing before, drug traffic and wiretap conspiracy. The only thing is that there wasn't really no drugs involved. It was just my name give promotions. My name get headlines. My name, well, you know, that's for them. You know, shit is politics, bro. So I got caught up. I straddled the fence. I got to accept my responsibility. I was rationalizing that. I'm not selling drugs, you know what I'm saying? My, I'm going to talk to my young men, but I don't want to preach to them, so I don't want to make them feel judged because I knew that that's how dudes used to turn me off. Like, yo, don't do this, this, this. So I used to, you know, I chill with them and try to show them what I'm doing and without trying to, like, judge them for what they're doing and hopefully they'll catch wind. I'm not trying to act like the paragon of virtue either, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. I ain't no fucking saint, but I know that I ain't want to put a f price tag on my freedom. And um, they took a conversation of a half an ounce of weed and turned it into um, some other shit because I smoked mad butt, you dig? And then my history, it was like either go. I just copped out now, to be honest, because I didn't want to play with trial because I knew they had a few things that they could convince somebody. I didn't want to go up there and lose the rest of my head trying to get an appeal. You understand what I'm trying to tell mm -hmm. you? So when the numbers made sense, I was like, you know what, I'm going to grab that and I'm going to head up and do that real quick and come back. And um, that's it. Wow. How much time you gonna do? I mean, I got it down from um, from 11 years to four, non-violent, so it's not that bad. I already gave him a down payment. <laughs> this, is guy, this, this guy is crazy, man. Nah, nah. Really? For, he about to turn something next week? That's serious, bro. That's why, that's why he's here. Wow, we appreciate you, man. Even even more now, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's... Yeah. Wow. Next Thursday. Next Thursday. Yeah, I gotta go walk in there. I mean, I'm trying to get my lawyer to give me an extension. I know this interview ain't coming out before that, so. You think so? <laughs> <laughs> this clip come out quick. <laughs> it's coming out this week, man. But yeah. damn, man, water wow. just like that, man. I mean, yeah, man. I mean, it's not just like that. Don't get me wrong. I ain't trying to act like I'm. That shit is stressful, but I can't cry over spilled milk and all that. You know what I mean? Respect to you, All man. I can do is just, right. you know, prepare my family for the situation, prepare my kids, and just bite the bullet. I'm not. I could have actually right now been doing a program. You know what I'm saying, niggas? The police just came to my house on some bullshit. Like, yo, this dude just got a virtual, nigga. That he just helped come. You know, whatever. You know, not. And they was like, yo, listen, you could come over here if you remember some shit. We're going to help you out. We know you're getting sentenced. And I was like, I ain't with that, bro. I'm going to be all right. And mm. that's it. That's real. Central Park Five. Um, basically, the story, what I got from it is that you, I really don't, you know, while listening to it, what I got from it is that you, with an ear to the guy that did it, and you listened to him, um, and um, did you convince him to admit it, or did he convince, like, what is that story? How did that whole thing come into fruition where you play a role in that? He's a guy that I was helping out. He's a guy for before I could even mention, I should say that the day I met him, he told me who he was, and I, I know people, some people for 10, 20 years, and they still haven't told me really not much about themselves, you know? <laughs> So with him, the day I met him, That's real. he told me, yo, I don't think you should sit next to me. I'm doing time for rape and murder. And then in prison, that's the last thing anybody admits to, especially to the new guy that just got released from quarantine and you meet him for the first time. So, um, you know, when at the time, I already had a heavy heart at the time and going through my own shit with, with this case, with all the blood, with all the things that have happened, my sister, her daughter dying right after her. Wow. Um, I was like, um, I was I was ready to just make a change, you know, about oh, as much as possible, right? So now I'm sitting next to this guy, and he told me the really shit that you could tell anybody, in my opinion, and I'm there, right? So it helped me a lot 
it helped me a lot because it taught me like yo just do the best you could as as you are whomever you are wherever you are and um that lesson i didn't learn it right then and there it took time you know because we, since he was that straightforward i got cool with him and then he got in trouble i hope a mile you know he didn't have nobody no family no visits pull him down on visits huh nobody rocked with him at all no nah. so i would pull him down on visits and the packages whatever i could do to help him out and um he got he he i convinced him to get a transfer to a sex offenders program which was Merle Cooper. And so he gave it a shot. So I stopped oil, right? I'm helping the guy out, you know? And then he got in trouble over it. He cracked somebody in the head, split his skull open. So he got transferred. When he got transferred, he saw Wise, where he was at, and he said, oh shit, this dude's still in jail. And then he, on his own, went to a, a captain and told him his situation. But they have a protocol they gotta follow when they do that. So that guy called the Inspector General, and they came and interviewed him, and he admitted to them, and now all they did was put him in protective custody against his will because you can't be roaming around with somebody that, you know, this could, this could lead to a situation. That guy might know that it's you that did that, although he didn't. And so um, he got transferred back to Clinton. Then when he got with me, he told me, yo, I did this and I did that. Remember, I told you about this, told you not to tell nobody. Well, this is where I'm at with it. And um, nothing has happened. Can you help me out? And so the way I helped him out is that I introduced him over the phone to my attorney, and we got the process going so that it could be known that he has a confession, and so that he could get his DNA taken, and so that they could challenge the convictions of the other five gentlemen that were already incarcerated or convicted for it at the time. And so that's how I helped. And then you said people were coming to you, and did you? Oh yeah, because you know, it wasn't, no, you know, I was getting a lot of pressure. You know, you had a team of, of uh, law enforcement that don't want that to happen. They didn't want that to happen. Still mad that it happened as far as their uh, exoneration. And then you had a team of law enforcement that wanted to expose if it's true. Let's just correct it and fix it. So you had to, I had to answer visits from both. But I only really was trying to do the visit with the ones that are trying to do the right thing. So the team that wanted to um, keep the wrongful conviction intact, you know, you get threats about parole, about they could write a letter to parole and just fuck your whole life up, you know? You don't know. And so those are the kind of things that I was going through under that under that uh under that um under that pressure, bro, because it was a lot of pressure because we could just not do nothing and now the problem is over. Yeah, but since I me. was continue, huh? That would have been me. So but since I was continuing to try that, <laughs> I was um I was under pressure, but I'm glad I did it at the end, bro, because it added a lot uh, a lot of strength to me inside, you know. But then they said that you know, you know, how did you feel? Because obviously these guys, you know, they got exonerated, and you know they want some money. But you said you wasn't. You, they don't owe you. Well, yeah, nothing. yeah, they don't owe me no money. I mean, we they, they don't. I ain't, I don't remember any of them taking any packs from me. And um, <laughs> they definitely never borrow nothing from me. So they don't owe me. You don't really owe somebody when they do good for you. It's up to you to, if you want to, be receptive and pay it forward or, you know, extend a hand. But um, I'm super old school. I'm not going to change that. So in my mind, in my life, I try to stay thank you as much as possible because the only thing that you need to return as a recipient of somebody else's generosity is a simple thank you, whether mm. you mean it or not, you know? So, so I I was just um was actually past tense feeling like damn I took on all that shit but who, and I'm talking to myself ain't nobody told me to do that shit but that's what Lynn would have did that's what she would have been happy with she was involved with it she she um cheered me on and so I'm glad that I did do it you know as far as them not reciprocating i don't really give a fuck no more you know because it's the kind of thing like if you got to force a thank you out of somebody for changing your life for the better then i don't want that shit. you know but you think they knew that you had something of course they know they've been contacted by multiple people you know um michael k williams who's in the movie respected actor i am a fan of his he he him and i discussed this he knows this deal he we discussed this while he was on set working with ava you know, you can't deny it. Um, you know, we got pictures, we got texts, we got emails. 
So you're telling me that he was in, he was intrigued to sit down with me, but he wasn't going back and asking a question or comparing a conversation or fact checking. He had to because he's a professional. And uh, Michael K. Williams is a brand, in my opinion. You know, like I said, I'm a fan. So he knew, and if he knew, and the other gentlemen that were sitting at the meeting with me knew, somebody else got to know. And if none of that shit is true or existed, they know because multiple people have texted them, DM'd them, faxed them, emailed them throughout the entire process. And there's no way to say you don't know because they've answered some of the things with just an emoji. So... Mm. They know, but like I said, they don't owe me nothing. It would have been nice. We, we I live it. I, I I try to live in a way where I reciprocate as much as possible in order to continue to keep doing better because you continue to add links to, you know, your journey. Right. And um, so for me, that's the opposite of of how I live. I wouldn't be able to sleep. I gotta go and be like, yo, thank you, brother. No one, mm. you know what I'm saying. So so all them people, no, no, nobody pay homage to. No. That's crazy. But this is the last time I'm talking about it, actually. I said that before I agreed to come on here, and so it would be unfair to not discuss it because it's relevant and it continues to be relevant, but um, I don't feel like any good could come from discussing that any further. Respect, you know? respect. Mm-hmm. Yeah, respect so, it about how you feel about it. You just don't yeah, feel any good. I, I respect uh, that. You know, if I, I do that. something for you and you and you that type, and you, you, it could be anything. I'm helping you out. You just don't say thank you. I don't just say thank you. At some point, you don't even want my thank you, correct? You like, yeah. at some point, you're gonna stop helping because the only thing that I could do for you, I'm not doing in return. So it becomes, you know, you you break the chain. I, I mean, think. I think I think they should be appreciated. Not saying it because, you know, he my man or whatever the case may be, but I would have not did none of that shit. He would have told me. I would have said, yeah, go tell them. They would say like, yo, and I would have been thinking about that shit. Man, I ain't fucking on my parole, and I ain't got nothing to do with this shit. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. But I'm glad he did it, and I, I think, think he did a super dope situation. It's whack that they don't appreciate it, but like you said, nobody really, you know. But I'm sorry, but because he 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 paraphrased a little bit, and I guess I gotta listen to, uh, cause he, you know, and I understand because he probably done talking about it, mm-hmm. but I'm trying to figure out like exactly, you know, I know that like, I heard something about, you know, the phone and 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 um, you you put him in contact with 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 lawyers, so you help. Get the process started in order for them to get exonerated, basically. Which means that had I not done that, who knows if it would have ever got started, you know? Butterfly effect, you know? And um, where we were at and in any prison, yo, bro, you know, you only hear the stories of dudes, you need to come home, you brolic, you got five motherfucking wife beaters for five ninety nine. Every day you come outside and stand around, you know, Look what I came back with, right? Those are really the stories. What I'm trying to say is, you know, you don't hear the, 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 the shit that made people suffer, right? So I was there, so I know what it is to suffer. You know, you just dead. You just, you only exist in there. And they existed in there, though, with unfortunate labels on them, unjustly and wrongfully, right? Mm. So I'm sure, like I said before, that they prayed. Because I don't care if you're an atheist, bro. You, you After holding them cold bars for long enough, you can start praying to somebody. I don't care if it's Gandhi, but you're going to start praying to somebody. So I'm sure it's only normal that one or two have, have prayed like, man, I would need a miracle. God, help, this. We don't really know whether whoever you believe in or what you believe in, you don't, you don't really know. But when you pray and pray and pray and you get answers, you, it has to at least shock you, man. Like, yo, look what happened here. I don't know where this came. It wouldn't have came if that guy that thinks like that, that got those contacts and moves like that, moves like that for you. And you don't want to talk about it no more. You over it. Nah, I'm it answering happened. you today. I got no, 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 no respect. No, I'm I just got saying. something on schedule that I already let them know. Like, yo, I'm not. I don't want to really talk about God. I could talk about all kinds of things. You know what I'm saying? So. Uh, I don't really want to because I don't want to continue to keep uh, um, beating that horse. They, somebody spend it about money, but I've never asked for money. You know mm. what I'm saying? I never asked nobody for money. Yeah, I did, if, uh, if, 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 you know, I, this is another thing I only learned now. Wow, well, that would um, Money, yo, I, I feel strange. It's only the second time that I'm saying this, so it feels a little strange. That's why I'm kind of trying to find how to disclaim this shit. However, um, Money ain't everything I learned. And so a little respect would have went a long way. Up and up something, appreciation, but you know 
the situation. So you could have came to me and said, how could we help you? I might have said, I'm good. You could have said, you need a job? I would have said, yeah. Yo, we like how you think. Let's open up something to help other people in the community in exchange. We don't want to do nothing for you, but let's help other people. I got a list of people you can help. What year you came home? 2009. What year you came home? Six. 2006. And when did, like, the story, as far as, like, the story come out, when you started telling the story? I don't know if people know about you, but what was your first, your first interview? Was the Info Minds joint? No, I was uh, doing some, some, uh, I was working on that and at the same time with Jules from Felon Magazine. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. And that's how I started rolling, but um, I've been trying to sell my story for a long time and I started writing it a long time ago. So it it just became a thing of, you know, I got all these notes, I'm getting transferred, there's all kind of information on here, I gotta send it home, get to the next spot. First thing I need is that, that's what I'm working on. Call back for it again, boom. Getting transferred again, same process. And carrying the story around until I got in a place where I was at the longest and I and a friend started putting together scripts. And one of them is the lockdown script uh, that was made into a documentary. And then there's another one and then there was uh, the YTC story. They said that um, I just wrote his name down. The kid that passed away, Merlin Santana. Yeah, how yeah, he you was know shopping him? it. I met him through Tito. T, how you know him, T? Um, he was doing commercials in the neighborhood since young. You know what I'm saying? Like he was probably like he was doing Chips Ahoy commercials, Toys R Us commercial. When Cosby I had, show. yeah, he was in the Cosby Show and shit. I think his name was Stanley. Yeah, Stan. I saw him. I saw him. Yeah. So what happened was, um, I, again, that was around the time when I moved back from the from the Bronx over here. So I'm running around the hood causing havoc with dudes and shit because everything was, everything was happy in Manhattan, my nigga, like when I got there. Like, I, I couldn't walk through a certain projects in the, well, through the projects in the Bronx. If I ain't know nobody, or I guess the same shit in Brooklyn, or you don't know nobody, you can't just be walking through the projects around that time. Dudes going... And I walked through projects over here, and everybody was happy. I was like, this shit crazy. So I just started bringing dudes from the Bronx downtown and wilding out. So anyway, he used to have a motorbike, and his moms, they used to take his motorbike and ride that shit to the gas run out, and yo, yo, your bike is over there type shit. You know what I'm saying? Go get it. And his mom got tired of that, so she told the dude that I used to hang out with, um, yo, my son is having this problem. He told me. So we went and approached the dude with the problem, and we wowed out on him and beat him up. So that's our little man. I, I, I didn't shoot him. No, we was nah, nah, nah. We was that was on. We was young. That, I mean, that was on some jumping shit. But um, and then mom got cool, and you know, and that's how we got cool and shit. He used to let. I did it because I wanted to ride the motorbike at the time. But then I'm glad that I did it because he. My, I'm saying I'm being told, but after that, I, 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 I turned into a cool friend. That was a you know that shit really hurt me when that shit happened to him. That was like a real waste of life. You know what I'm saying? What they He's did. He's talented. Yeah, he that. I mean, I ain't trying to die, and I, but those is type of deaths reserved for individuals like us. You understand what I'm trying mm. to tell you? Not for an individual that haven't hurt no one that was doing the right thing basically all his life. But when him. I read it today, they said that he died because uh, somebody accused him of something with a girl or yeah. something like that. Yeah, yeah, she made but, that up. But she, what happened was, they met in a, in a, in, a, in like in a some place where they was eating or whatever, and they took him back to the whatever the house, and he ain't really pay attention to her. She was really there for him, so she felt like this nigga shitting on me. You know what I mean? He brought me here like for his homie type shit to talk to me or whatever. And um, I guessed she wasn't supposed to be there, and the people she was fucking her man or whatever, like, yo, where you at? Oh, I ended up here, and this dude trying to do this to try to deflect the situation off of her, cause I guess she was gonna get in trouble for being with around some other niggas. And son came, they came through blaming, and killed my little man. Er. Well, before we wrap it up, I I, I want to ask you something, cause you do interviews, you know, let's flip the script, so. <laughs> You got to tell us, you don't have to, but I want you to tell us something or talk about something on here that you have not talked about in any interview yet. Whichever one of y'all. Well, I'm going to think about that. 
Yeah, take your time. <laughs> take your time. Because I listen to you and you have a very calming voice and so, nah, but you playing dead and shit. So you you slick. I yeah, I know you no, got some no, shit. No, I answer any question you got. I of mean, course, but you know you, you got other stories, man. Come on, man. But what are you looking for? You looking for a war story? You looking it doesn't for matter. Any, any, you story, looking for? any story you comfortable? My, just something that you didn't talk about yet. Any story you're comfortable with? Anything you're comfortable? I'm not here to to uh, push the narrative or or you know. I see that you change your life and you know you're doing things for the better. But any story you're comfortable with telling that you haven't talked about on a platform before? Um, I mean, I talk about shit well uncomfortable or not. That's that. I'm just trying to um right give you the best that I could, you know, for whatever it is. I don't want to talk to you about something dark if you're trying to hear a. Doesn't uh, matter. You know. I'm just saying, whatever you comfortable with, because I don't want people to be like, yo, whatever you comfortable with, man. Whatever you comfortable with, man. A lot of people, you know, when they come on here, um, you know, they talk about things and then, <laughs> you know, they hit, they try to hit us up later. Like you gotta take that down because <laughs> you know, we, don't, we, don't, we don't take nah, shit down. Nah, I won't. I won't the be calling you for that. Big homie called and all yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know about that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know, I definitely wanted to to get some sort of whatever, if it was an issue, if it was something that you was involved in or whatever, something that, you know, nobody heard before on any other platform, you know, an exclusive for Flip the Script. Well, um, I don't know how, how how much of an exclusive it is, but my, my message is really trying to get people to think more. Young people are into the street, right? Mm -hmm. So that at least vicariously they could avoid the, 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 the cesspools that I was in. So everybody's experience is different. I'm, you know, his experience or not, my experience is in prison or outside. I only speak about mine. And um, for uh, there was a time I thought I was gonna lose my mind in there. So I like people to know, young people. I'm not, I'm not really trying to change no old crocodiles. I'm just trying to get people something to think about that still can make a change. So I thought I was gonna lose my mind because you know what was happening with my family. You know, I, I, although I thought I was gonna be helping, I, I hurt my family more than I could ever help them. You know. And although I wanted to be a better person than my father, I became a worse person than him because he was a deadbeat dad, but I got a couple of murders under my belt and I'm doing time in this prison with all these people. So I don't ever mm -hmm. give the, you know, the the war stories of all of the champagne, all the chicks that we have, cars, jewelry. I'm trying to talk about what I hope, in your words, spook somebody into saying, I ain't fucking with that shit. You lose your mind upstate. I've seen people do it, people you know, and now you don't know them. They eating raw coffee or they laying out in the yard, you know, hmm. bad. So my, my thing is that, brother, I, I I suffered a lot. What I did wasn't worth doing, no matter how much I got or had. And the people that give me props for doing that, um, I listen to you, brother, but you giving me props for what I think is the worst things that I've done, you know? So that's my my um my exclusive man. I'm not big enough the things I did or the things that um I'm responsible for. So what's going on now with, with you guys? Well, I know you got a, you got a week before you, yeah. you know you, you you uh that situation. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So uh you know definitely salute to you for that. Hold your head. You know what I'm saying? Um, but what's going on with you though, Chango? Uh, for that's not really that's just a situation in my life. That's not what's going on. What's going on with me at the end of the day? I got my son. He got a production company, and I okay. help him push that called Guala Production, Guala nope. Life. And um, and I got a script also. Like, we, he got a script, I got a script, and mm -hmm. then we'll do a script together. You know, we got to cash into that shit three times. Um, and that's it, man. Other than that, I'm a family man. As far as something that I ain't never said on um, on an interview, um, I had a crush on Little Kim when I was coming up. <laughs> <laughs> Talk I ain't never say it. that, right? Talk about it. Not but um, it's, yeah, it's a time for I don't like right the now. way she wasted he, he, um the way she did her face though. But that's neither here nor there. Um, but one thing I would like to say, man, yo, a lot of times people be tending to think, oh, y'all dudes running around like we was on some bully shit. We ain't never do no bully shit. We ain't never start no problem. Right. We ain't never try to extort no one. We ain't never rob no one. We ain't never do no betray sucker shit to nobody, man. Well, Even did, if I you did were, rob a few people. I mean, I, I, what? The took Puerto five Rican? keys from one dude. Took nah, and them niggas owed that. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, they owed that to me. That's how I look at it. They owed that. You know what I'm saying? They violated us. But um, that's it, bro. I ain't and then and, and so I never encouraged no one. I ain't never said, yo, you should sell drugs. Right. 
If you wanted to sell drugs, then I'll put you on. You understand what I'm trying to tell you? And if I felt that you was, you know, valid, that was it. I ain't never sold to no kids. When, you know, when school was turning out from 2.45 to 4 o'clock, we shut down the spot so the kids could get back and forth to school. Like, we try to have some morals with our shit, even though we wasn't doing the right thing. You understand right. what I'm trying to tell you? And, um... And that's it. We ain't never do no random acts. We ain't never shoot up no basketball court. We ain't never do no none of that dumb shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? We hit a target if that's what needed to be hit. And that was other than that, we want to be happy. You understand what I'm trying to tell you? We get money. We want everybody to get money. My philosophy is if everybody doing good, everybody minding their business. You understand what I'm trying to tell you? And that's basically it. A lot of times people want to paint this like, yo, y'all was running around. And y'all, a dude told us, yo, that shit was senseless. What y'all did? I was like, senseless? If you pull up to the block and a nigga shoot your whole car up for no reason because you playing reggaeton, mm. that's senseless? I think and at that, I ain't with that now and I ain't in those positions. I hope God never put me in those positions. But in that day and age, and even today, a dude shoot at your whole, you coming back if you made it. You understand what I'm trying to tell you? And, mm -hmm. you know, they better, like, that's it. So, you know, sometimes people just misconstrue or try to say shit. A lot of people act like they know us, but they ain't really never had a conversation with us. You just know because you lived in the neighborhood that we was running through. You understand what I'm trying to tell you? So you see this in passing, but you don't really know. You ain't never sit down and have a conversation with me. You understand what I'm right. saying? But people they said don't... They had a they said they had a multi-million dollar empire. Yeah, yeah, that's true. We had a lot of money. We had a lot of work. We had a lot of, you know, a lot of everything. But um, we were young, so we weren't educated on money. You know, buy a mm -hmm. car, another car. Police took that car, get another car. Hurry up, go get it while that motherfucker's still on shift. Go get it while he's working. Take a motorcycle, go buy another motorcycle, get a few apartments, vacations, pay for everything for everybody. And, mm -hmm. you know, just silly shit. As far as getting back to your questions, what I'm doing now, I'm selling a script. I'm starting a podcast, and um, I got a nine to five, of course, and I'm flipping homes. I'm up to my second home now, nice. and so nice. I'm trying to, I'm trying to be the, uh, I'm trying to go back to my octopus mentality. Starting a podcast. That's right. Hmm, interesting. Oh <laughs> yeah, hold on. Shameless plug. Said, mm. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah. T -t Tell us about the podcast you're starting. It's, it's gonna. What you mean? What's called Apartment 107? Nice, uh, nice. I think so. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I'm flattered that you like it. That tells me something because I text one of you guys, or was it you saying? Damn, that Queen's flip shit. I'm feeling that motherfucking handle. That shit is 90s all the way, you know? Oh, all right. I appreciate that, so, man. So, what's up? You want to trade our own Goya? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, tell us. No, no, no. I, I think that, um, um, do you have it already in, in motion? How you going to do it? You already have it? Or you just... I have an outline. I have the, nice. uh, you know, the computers that I need. Well, they, nice. they in the mail. They should be here tomorrow. Here, I hope they don't get here. I hope they get to where they're supposed to tomorrow. <laughs> and, um... <laughs> And and I'm gonna take a shot and see what happens. Did you start a YouTube already? Sure. You got a YouTube. Yeah. All right, please. Well, you know, my assistant, please give her the YouTube and stuff so I can put it, you yeah, know, in the description. That. Yeah, that, yeah. So you have a you have a YouTube and apartment 107. It's called. Yeah, yeah. That sounds. Like I'm it. I'm supposed to start a podcast, uh, for a network also. Hopefully Thursday I'll sign that piece of paper, and uh, I'm just trying, like I said, octopus mentality, bro. You know. Do as many things as I can do while I can do them. All right, well, you know I gotta. I, you should, you should listen. What you guys are doing, bro, to me is, uh, and I'm not trying to flatter you. I'm talking about all of you guys that are taking the chance and doing this, getting in front of a mic every day, doing what you gotta do, putting the research, putting the work. You know, to me, that's uh, revolutionary because. All the guys that are doing this right now, sit on the serious tip, I'm not talking about sitting behind a dirty ass bed sheet, and you know. Um, just talking some mumbo jumbo shit. I'm talking about actual research with, with 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 substance. You guys are the new. Everybody that's already done it for the 40, 50 years. That's that's that are iconic. You know. How, how did you hear Ron about Kite, uh You know, yeah. and the ones that are directing are the next Spike Lee's. The dudes that are doing the little acting are the next actors. And it's, I think it's amazing because for a long time nobody could get into these circles unless you white. Or know somebody, you know, mm. and not everybody could do their own thing and express themselves and and, and take over their entrepreneurial skills. What was your question? How did you hear about this the, the podcast? Flip the script. From oh, this gentleman right here. Oh him. All right. Yeah. So what's his name? His name is Jesus. Jesus. Oh, salute to Jesus, man. I appreciate that. Yeah. So he, he he told you that you should he think you should come on here. Yeah, yeah. I I, I he told me to watch <laughs> so I could come on here. 
And then I seen some crazy <laughs> shit happen. I think he was gonna beat somebody up from High 97. I don't remember what happened. Oh, Ebro, right, with the yeah, Ebro yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and I was like, wait a minute, man. I'm not really, you know, I'm not really, <laughs> no, not... I ain't trying to fight. First no, of all. no, 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 come on. <laughs> but then he kept encouraging me, sending me other things that you did and other ones and other ones and other ones. Yeah. I, I like that you pulled up to that OG and gave him a phone, you know, different things on my own. It took me time so I could feel it out because I don't want to do nothing ratchet. I ain't trying to be talking about a bunch of bullshit. You know? I respect that. I respect. And that's the thing. With flip the script, man. You know, um, it's, of course, we're bringing a lot of light to different stories, and it may, you know, it may cause a domino effect. But my main thing is to just give a platform to talk. You know, and that's why I told the brother, Pastor Benny, you know, when he asked, "What are what is your, what are your guys' goals of uh, putting these stories out?" And it's not to cause any trouble. It's not to do none of that. It's to bring peace in certain situations. It's to hear stories because. The people like to listen to stories and they like to learn. That's you know, right. Nobody picks up a book and read anymore. It's like an no. audio book. You know what I mean? That's what this and is. And you are teaching. You are teaching because you're asking questions, you're getting answers. People people get insight, you know, and they learn or they change opinions based on your platform. So that is teaching and passing forward. This is my man, too, man. I, mean, I, I, I rock with y'all, man. He about to go next week. I feel bad, man. Well, you can't uh, rock with us right now, better. but you can rock with him. He need a bunkie. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> I don't even do that double book shit. Oh, uh, yo, you hear me though? Um, <coughs> nah, I think I think y'all got a dope situation. I've been following you for a minute. You Appreciate know what I'm that. Yeah, longer um, than me. He knew. Uh, I think y'all balanced yourself out very well. Thank you, you know? brother. That means I mean, a lot, he man. wild on. I mean, I, he ain't wild on me. I would thought that dude. He courageous to eat that bowl of food on camera. Like, yeah, when y'all were doing the intro, you was eating some food there and all that. You did it good. You didn't get no rice on you or none of that shit. Oh, I said, yeah, it was smooth. Yeah. I would have had shit all on my shirt. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, um, I think I think, I think think y'all dope, man. I was a little apprehensive, like, what? before coming up. Because you a wild boy, B. Like, mm -hmm. I like, I hope this dude don't put me in no position, my man, like, to just have, you know what I'm saying? Man, <laughs> like, why everybody think that, man? Everybody said the same thing. <laughs> oh, man, damn, bro. You gotta no, watch no. the interviews. I be chilling on the interviews. No, though. but then I learn. I learn, and and you do you a you do a great job because you know how to elevate and diffuse at the same time, and how to like check a dude and that's his crap. You know, like you, yeah, you, you know, I appreciate damn man. You know, like, he been telling me for a while like yo, people don't even want to come up here. I mean, now it's they're coming, but I think the videos, you know, I don't, I don't know. It's just pranks, man. You know, you gotta now nah, you got your own style. It's a, it's a joke, right? You know, Um, this was like once that started happening, it kind of shifted into more like stories. Yeah, yeah it, w it wasn't a direction. I mean, if you watch the podcast, like I got a clip, we got a clip up from one to 50. It was crazy, a bunch of craziness, <laughs> arguing with people, throwing water, all type of r ridiculousness, man. Mm -hmm. But um, we did have classic interviews, no, and yeah. then you know, the homie Bimmy came up here, and then you know, it. it, it went from that he introduced me to soul b and then that it just took on his life a life of its own yeah. and a lot of other podcast people that that's in this lane or that put stories up you know we salute them you know and um you know some of them they feel that you know we're taking a style but i think that that flip the script is a completely different thing no, that i don't see do. no i don't see you doing that yeah yeah i mean you know I see the opposite as a matter of fact yeah uh, it, it, we, we you know we do stay and i appreciate that we do something completely different you won't believe if you go and type in queens flip on youtube and press the button the filter and put upload date you'll see a whole bunch of people saying that you know and saluting them the ones the pioneers that was doing it first but we're doing it on a different scale yeah. i mean it took yeah, a life of everything yeah. you know you gotta continue to evolve you don't stay the same exactly but you yeah and yeah definitely tapped in because like I said, I follow you for a while, but I wasn't really like just. But once you did the, y'all did the um the blood shit and all that. Besides the fact that it took me back to a time that I know that era, I seen the development and all of that. Um, you gave a platform to a different type of in the you know crowd right now. Mm. That's coming home now from ninety three, ninety two, ninety. You know what I'm saying? That it just right. came, home. and these are dudes that put at work that deserve to have a platform and hopefully do something positive with it. You know what I'm saying? Some dudes, you know, they just happy with the likes and the, and the views, but you got a bunch of dudes, like probably you get Wayno. Wayno's doing a lot of positive things. And yeah. he was one of the founders I of I heard, no, 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 we working on we working on different things. We even working on doing a big show 
to bring you know everybody together you know to, you know i just want to make sure it's in a position where people get you know the people that's coming to get you know get compensated you know what i'm saying and yeah. i just want to take care of everybody you mind uh-huh. passing me that on the floor behind you? Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. You know, you still got it in. You still got it in you, man. Yeah, I see opportunities <laughs> all the time, man. <laughs> <laughs> but yo, give us your Instagrams. You know, before we sign out, give us your Instagram. I, I definitely want to say I appreciate this. I, appreciate I definitely appreciate it. Also, it. I appreciate like story. I think the story. You know, you guys told us being young and you know, like I like it. Like, when I mean like it, like. It's captivating. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I think it's dope. But what's your Instagram and stuff? Django underscore CP5. CP5? Yeah, Django underscore CP5. Me, I'm um, Titon Rosavelli. Titon underscore T I T O N underscore R O S A V E L L I. And um, like you can find out to who? Tito. You can find me like that everywhere you can just google that like that shout out to bonnie no class shout out to Infoman. shout out to for the culture yeah shout out, shout out to well. gully tv i had a good i had a good um i had a good session with gully tv man recently uh about a month two months ago salute salute and shout yeah. out to um am guala top guala movimiento those is my young boy they move movimiento actually was the one that introduced me to jack me and jack was at funk flex all black affair boat party yeah, Jack. He Boy. doing a lot of work on this side, you know what I mean? As far as positivity, um, me and him, we go to the same direction, taking different roads, but you know we help kids on a different type of way, you know what I mean? So, but um, we always go into the same type of road, and um, I was working with kids in our wagon houses. Yeah. I had twenty two kids on my case load, right? Seventeen of them had open gun cases. Two of them had three open gun cases each. Two of them got murdered. None of them were above 18 years old. None of them had beef over money. It was just crew shit, you know, block shit. Um, One kid had a butcher knife stuck in his head for crossing the street into the own project, right? It was all the way in, but it went, it was between his skin and his scalp. Mm. So you know you you see like the the knife is in there and you can't see it and it's, but it went it was in between the skin you know, so um, it's crazy to then be 34 years old you missing an eye over some cracks or some fucking bullshit or you missing fucking lung you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. um, it's not worth it bro, it's not worth mm-hmm. it at all. I think um, I think what you guys are doing is gonna is gonna obviously continue to grow grow that's the name of the game but i think i should keep it the way it is instead of um watering it down because the way you're doing it is dope you know yeah, that's what lloyd banks tell me <clears throat> so my man banks blue you know he said that um cherish these moments because you know you know i guess if a network come or when not if when 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 yeah. you know things would change yeah. you know what i mean and he said cherish he said because back in the days the mixtape days for him were his best days mm-hmm he broke it down. He's a That's big a good fan. point. Yeah. Who is that? Lloyd Banks. All right. He, probably, yeah, he sure. got that philosophy for 50. With 50 V, like, everything is a moment. Yeah. So we try to cherish the moment. We see we see where it goes. I mean, it took a life of its own. I mean, a lot of people are uh, interviewing. And this is, you know, the, 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 the thing that, you know, a lot of people are interviewing um, people that have paths and stuff. And we just try to, you know, meet different people, man. That's it. Yeah, that, but that, your network is your net worth, bro. Yeah. So you're building one right now. Appreciate y'all for coming. Well, signing right, out. Brother. Thank you for having us, bro. Hey, don't, don't get up yet, Chang. We got to sign out, man. Right, yeah, I'm trying to know. leave, man. I, I thought you said get out. I don't want to play. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. Yo, we out of here, man. At DJ G Money 156 on the Instagram. Every Thursday, Tipsy Thursdays, uh, another classic interview. You know what I'm saying? Um, I definitely got from, from these brothers that, you know, they, 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 they wasn't out here bullying, wasn't out here wilding out. They was trying to survive. You know what I'm saying? They they were they was coming up young, they were trying to hold, hold it down, they were trying to eat, they were trying Definitely. to, you know, um, hold down a family, you know what I'm saying? So salute to y'all, man. Thank you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> However, you said tipsy Thursdays, I didn't see not one drink. Oh, uh, the, well today today Tuesday. Yeah, today yeah. But, Okay, we but we here Tuesday, let's start Thursday, Tuesday, what, Tuesday. what's today? Monday? <laughs> I don't even drink, drink, bro. I'm just talking G, shit. G, G, no. <laughs> G late, yeah. You can't get it? Nah, I, nah. Like, I like it though. I like both of them. Nah. They cool, man. Nah. Nah. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> yeah. Got <Some> <laughs> <laughs> Yo, it's Queen's Flip, man.
listen, man, I like this interview. I definitely these guys, man, these brothers, you know, their story is 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 is, is amazing, man. You know, um, everybody has a story, and sometimes, or, or if you take your time and listen, you'll be able to understand. A lot of people listen to respond instead of listening to listen. It used to be like that. Me? No, me, me, uh -oh. me. Yeah, you're a good guy, man. Uh, thank you. you know, and um, make sure you take. You know, we got a a new saying. Listen. Mm. Shit. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Listen more. That's good. Not bad, man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot of people listen to respond. They'll listen to you. Right, I'm listening. I'm listening. Mm -hmm. But they already have in their mind the pre notion of what right. they're gonna say. Okay. Yeah, bro. Yeah, I'm gonna get it out instead of listening to listen. If you listen to listen, sometimes when somebody explains something to you and they're passionate, if you ever ever has a mind frame of going into a situation, and then when they explain it to you. Their, from their point of view or their perspective, it changes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So that's why you got to listen, man. Mm -hmm. You got to listen to care, I think, you know? Exactly. Man, it's my man. Some, some people to ask you, how you doing? They walk right past you, and I'm like, at what point do I answer you? You know? Yeah. Facts. So it's just, they just, um, they just uh, experts in the art of small talk. You know? mm. That's mm. how I see it. But this Queens Flip, URLTV.TV, man. Another classic, dope interview. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Um... A man going next week, but salute. Yeah. Um, salute God man. willing, we man, we be back soon. And again, this is something that youngins can learn from. Facts. I'm basically being penalized because of my past, mm -hmm. and and once you get caught up in this system, it's, it, you really gotta walk. You know, you don't have you. It's not like a regular civilian. Like for my case, someone else would have. Oh, that's bullshit. They probably would not even got prosecuted, but being that they saw it was my name involved. But then again, you got to be like, hey, you haven't hit, you know, went to jail ever since. You understand what I'm trying to tell you? Mm -hmm. But when you got a past, it's easier for them to do things. Oh, to yeah. Bro. How do you say your name? Tight, like, it's spelled like Titan. You would call me Tito. It's easier for you. Tito. But um, the end is just, my man put that on after I grew up and my son's mother, they used to call me Titon. Tito. Tito. Well, it's it's like, that's like a Tito on steroids, get it? That's like a yeah. big Tito. Like that was Tito when I was little, and now that I'm grown, they call me Tito. Tito. You know Tito. And yeah, Rosa Valley is just my last name with the Valley attached to it. My last name is Rosa. Mm, mm. And that's it. And your son got, one more time, your son has a... Uh, he got a production a company, movie. Guala Production. His Guala name production. is Top Guala. His partner is M. Guala. Mm. And um, they work with a kid named Movimiento and shit. Movement. And they, they work working, they running around doing what they do. You can find them. Guala Life, Google that, they'll come up. Guala Boys. My partner, let me tell you this as, as um, we close. My partner with the scripts is in Jamaica. I met him in prison. He was serving a 15 and life sentence. He was an engineer. He graduated as an engineer, made one mistake, got him 15 and life. That's where we met. His name is Troy Ortega. He has already suffered about three seizures. He's um he's a, he's strong as a bull though, bro. So he's now right now what we're working on, he's typing with one hand and sometimes with just two fingers, you know. Yeah. It's affected his speech. He had to learn how to talk again, couldn't walk. But he's um a strong, strong one of the strongest and smartest people I met in prison. And uh salute to you, Troy. Shout out to him. Yo, this Queen's Flip, man, URL TV TV. You know, we here and lock your doors, close your windows. Close your blinds, open the door. If you see a nigga like Chango and Tito on your lawn, you can let Chango in, but don't be afraid to use a firearm for Tito. I'm from Queens. Wow.